Hello.
ഓക്കെ <laughs> Okay, then we'll mute it. Good evening, Dr. Good evening, Dr. Giri. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible, madam. You're audible. Hi. 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 Uh, My clarity is there. Very clear. Okay, sir. Very clear. Very clear. Okay. Thank you. ಏನು ಬರೋದಿಲ್ಲ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യാണ് സുമൻ സൈനി 
ಸರ್ ಹಲೋ ಕೆತ್ತನ್ ಸರ್ ನಮಗೆ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಸರ್ ಜಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಇಪ್ಪ ತರ್ಟಿ ಐ ತರ್ಟಿ ವೇರ್ ಜಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಎಂತ ಇದು ಇನ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಇದು ವರ್ನಂಡ
Hello. 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 Good Is evening. Audible? Yes, sir, we are. Yeah, it's audible. You can start speaking, sir. Yeah. Pravin, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Ready? Okay, young man. Sir. Friend, friend. Hi, hi. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, President, sir. Yes, sir. Take care. Sir. All the good. All the best. Thank you. Shall we start now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All okay. our uh, faculty are there. Suresh Nair has joined. I am unmuting all the faculties. Yeah. And uh, President of ESA Kerala. Binil uh, is there. Nibedita. Yes, she is unmuted. Then, no, no, no. I'm here. Where is... Uh, National President is there. He is the yes, 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 yes. I am ready. Uh, Suresh Nair, sir. He just joined. He just joined. Joined. He is unmuted. Binil. He Binil just joined. joined. He joined Binil. just now. Binil joined. Binil and uh, National Secretary. Yes, I, I have joined. Can you hear me? Mengedegiri? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can hear you, sir. There is some problem for Binil. He is trying to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Hello? Yeah, Suresh Nair is here. Yes, right. I mean, you can you see my slides now? Can you, can you see me? Hello? No, no, I can see you. I can see you. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can see you. Samshad Begum, yes. Okay. And we are on live ah, yeah. in YouTube okay, okay. as well. Pardon? We are on live in YouTube as well. Live. Yeah, yeah. YouTube also people can see. Here what we have done is, uh, we have kept only the faculties... Uh, Unmute that. All others are muted. Otherwise, if all uh, talk simultaneously, it will be difficult. Then. People can't hear. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, National President uh, Dr. Balabaskar, State President uh, Dr. Binil, uh, and uh, dear faculties, State Secretary Dr. Balabaskar, Academic Chairman. Uh, good evening, all, uh, all the participants. Uh, as per the National ISA guidelines, ISA National want to train all our members in this. Uh, COVID, uh, how to go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, proceed with the Anastasia if the, any patient comes or so. So we have selected three faculties uh, with the first hand experience with that. Dr. Shamshad Begum, who has set up a uh, HOD of Trishur, set up a OT there in uh, Trishur Medical College and uh, have started doing cases. Dr. Suresh Nayar, HOD. Lead consultant in uh, Aster uh, uh, Medicity Cochin and uh, Dr. Nivedita Pani, uh, HOD, and everything uh, in uh, uh, SCB Medical College uh, and the state government advisor, and uh, presently uh, doing a lot of these things. These three people are there to enlighten us. And uh, with this, uh, uh, as you all know, the three topics uh, setting up a OT, ventilation, and uh, intubation and ventilation, and uh, how to sterilize yeah. and equipment after uh, a COVID case. And if it is successful, people want, we will have further more uh, seminars uh, in the coming days, if you require, with the faculty. With this, uh, I request our uh, state yeah. president, uh, Dr. Abdul Nasser, uh, EKM uh, um, Nasser, to formally welcome all to this meeting. Hi, sir. Good evening. Honorable President, uh, Dr. Murlidhar Joshi, President-elect, uh, Dr. Vengadagiri, 
the honorable secretary dr navin malhotra the dr balabaskar faculty members and dear colleagues good evening and welcome to this uh, first webinar on covid-19 and anesthesiologist the state branch is already decided to have a series of such program and this is the first thing to begin with and i am very happy that uh, our uh, national president uh, dr murlidhar joshi is here to guide us the academic activities sir on behalf of the isa kerala state chapter i extend to you a warm welcome yes. our honorable secretary isa national dr david malhotra who has taken initiative in many of the enthusiastic ac associational activities on my personal behalf and on behalf of the kerala state chapter and members of the isa family of kerala i extend you a warm welcome you sir dr bal baskar who is the lead for many of the academic activities under isa is here to moderate the session along with uh, our uh, president elect isa national dr venkatagiri i hereby welcome dr balavaskar and dr venkatagiri to this scientific program we have a team of uh, eminent faculty members who has already been involved in setting up the theaters icus and guiding the government in managing the covid epidemic dr samshad begum who has set up the operation theater set up the guidelines set up the intensive care at uh, trichur government medical college trichur she is sharing her experience i think there will be a lot of uh, deliberations on how practically we can set up the the theaters and the intensive care unit i welcome you madam to this meeting dr suraj ji nayar the lead consultant astral medicity who is now sharing his knowledge and experience on intubation and ventilation in covid patient i extend you a warm welcome sir we have an eminent faculty from katak dr nivedita pani professor spg medical college katak who has taken the leadership in organizing all the covid related treatment aspects in katak and orissa madam i am really proud and honored to welcome you to the state of kerala on behalf of the governing council and the members of this association of our state i take this opportunity to to welcome dr balavaskar who is uh, moderating this session with dr balve uh, dr vengalagiri also i welcome all my senior members senior leaders officials and members of isa kerala state chapter to this meeting and our guest from other specialties who has joined this webinar and i hope this will be very useful and really interactive and thank you all and once again welcome you all jai isa thank you ready yeah okay N next i request the president for his uh, remarks uh, good evening uh, uh, chairman academic committee dr balabaskar president elect dr giri kerala isa state president uh, dr nazar and honorary secretary dr binel uh, it's nice to meet all of you uh, i mean in a warm uh, like uh, this kind of uh, nice evening over here but more than anything else i am more the i am happy about the initiative being taken uh, taken by the many of the isa city and state branches in conducting these kind of webinars when we have difficulty uh, in meeting in person because of the uh, the restriction because lockdown and uh, this particular uh, Uh, this webinar today holds a lot more importance than any other thing at this stage for two reasons. One is we are talking about the the basically COVID theater pre uh, pre op and inter op and uh, post op and how to go about the rest of things. This assumes uh, a lot of importance today because uh, today uh, morning or maybe around noon, uh, the government of India has uh, released the the healthcare facilities. Maybe the hospital and nursing homes will have to take up the hospital clinical work probably. depending on the the stage of the uh, containment zone that the respective states from 20th april onwards we might have to take up the electric cases also in this context very important because you never know somebody in incubation period might be having the harboring the virus 
it may not be so basically you will have to take the university precaution in this regard the kids are being in a limited number for the covid virus so literally you'll have to end up as uh, taking everybody as positive take you know self precaution not only take care of yourself you'll have to take care of your team uh, with this opening box uh, uh, wish everybody all the best for the event and we'll hopefully we're going to have good interaction uh, over back to moderator dr giri dr giri please okay uh, thank you and uh, 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 we uh, navin is there navin has joined i think navin has not joined he will join in uh, later and uh, now we will go with the our uh, first talk 730 we told in 732 we will go to dr shamsha's talk uh, madam uh, is hod in bar uh, medical college thrissur she was a faculty in all the uh, in conference kerala and the last year she gave a lecture in uh, cme at uh, isacon at bengaluru over to you madam i request to balabaskar sir to join to moderate this this uh, talk will this is a half an hour session and uh, as she finishes we will have a question session uh, you can put your question uh, uh, by typing in that and uh, she will be answering dr balabaskar will uh, moderate this please okay again, thank you giri for the introduction words so good evening to all shall i start please okay oh it is balabaskar to say Yeah, yeah good good evening madam good evening and good evening, uh, good evening sir uh, yeah 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 you are the right person to start the session please go ahead uh, one second sir navin sir has joined yeah. would like to hear from him before we start that's better yeah navin uh, can then uh, no, she can have the talk navin yes just join now I hope it's my turn to speak, Dr. Giri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, because we were not there, we went to the doc. She is yet to start the doc. You just uh, tell me where this thing and then. Good uh, evening, uh, good evening, dear friends, and uh, uh, greetings from Indian Society of Anesthesiologists National Headquarters. Uh, and I really congratulate the office bearers of IAC Kerala State Branch for designing such a beautiful program and conducting such a useful uh, academic activity. under the banner of isa kerala state branch and i congratulate the coordinator uh, the gc member dr venkat giri uh, our president elect and uh, other members of the kerala state branch the president of another and uh, dr benil and other members all the speakers good luck to all of you and i hope it will be a very very useful academic program i just want to utilize this platform one minute for uh, letting it known to all the viewers that today isa national has released uh, the grants for uh, buying procuring uh, n95 mask and uh, face uh, face shields and ppes to all those branches who had submitted their bank account details but that does not means that others have been left out uh, the last date of submitting it was sunday but i waited for two more days yesterday was a bank holiday so i released the grant today but don't get disheartened keep on sending your bank details we shall keep on collecting and compiling those bank details and uh, please read our uh, advisory and position statement one and two completely what i have seen is that our member uh, spent time uh, more time in social media the do apologies but uh, please read our isa national advisory and position statement one and two completely you 99% of things are self explanatory and please send your bank details those who are keep on sending they will be compiled and the grants will be reimbursed uh, as and when uh, the bank details are submitted uh, i now uh, hand over the uh, meeting to the organizers for carrying on the academic activity long live is so um, dr venkatgiri dr venkatgiri hello can you hear me yes sir we can hear you just yeah. go yeah yeah you know just you know just before before madam st starts the session um, probably what we will do is there is 15 minutes talk followed by 15 minutes of discussion so whoever is uh, watching the program they can uh, put their question in the chat section and at the end of the 15 minutes we will try to pick up the questions in a serial order in the chat 
and try to answer through our faculty who is participating so if uh, we exceed the time limit of 15 minutes for discussion we will try to have uh, the answers answered by our faculty later on so because each session is about 30 minutes and 15 minutes of discussion is there so i advise and request my friends to put their queries in the chat that is number 1 and secondly uh, please put only questions related to the particular se section so don't add questions out of that particular speaker's uh, zone uh, so that we um, spend less time on choosing the best questions in the serial order i hope every, everybody has understood now i request uh, dr shamsad begum to start the session madam please okay, go ahead you, sir first of all good evening to all first of all i thank the uh, isa the uh, isa leaders of kerala as well as the national for giving me a chance to participate in this isa webinar and and for the next 15 minutes i will be talking on setting up a covid operation theater shall i add the okay setting up a covid operation theater as you all know coronavirus 19 outbreak is designed as a public health emergency and it is a serious health problem now okay and i will be talking under the following headings and the, it is a serious pandemic caused by the sars novel coronavirus and it is a challenge to the healthcare system and as we all are uh, passing through this uh, situation of this crisis period we are really realizing the what the depth of the problem that the coronavirus has created and as anesthesiologists in front of the um, managing the patients we are also facing so many of the problems and there is high chance of confronting with the infected patient source so we are dealing with the patients uh, to manage the emergency surgeries accident and emergency care pre anesthesia clinic and post anesthesia care unit and the critical care and also the complications because coronavirus produces severe respiratory problems starting with the mild uh, infections to the severe problems like ards and it just becomes fatal also the management so it causes the complications like pneumonia pulmonary edema ards multi organ dysfunction and uh, severe acute respiratory infections so the role of anesthesiologist starts from the resident period itself as per the uh, guidelines from the central government the latest guidelines with this corona that is coronavirus outbreak the the in the first and the foremost people who are coming in uh, contact with this coronavirus management are the department of anesthesiology and critical care that is all departments of anesthesia and the main hospitals as well as the centers and all the other departments like medicine pulmonary medicine geriatric medicine emergency medicine all comes behind us so that is the significance of the department of anesthesiology in the management of the coronavirus so why trishur is significant trishur is significant in that the first confirmed case of covid-19 case that is uh, that was started in uh, wuhan and uh, the patient was from trishur and she was a medical student at wuhan and she was diagnosed as having corona virus disease and she was uh, transferred from there to kerala and uh, she was admitted in our hospital on january 31st at 5:30 am and she was after uh, 28 days she was discharged uh, fully um, recovered after the 28 period of treatment and trishu was considered as the hot hot spot for the corona diseases so we have to um, make so many of the adjustments with this corona disease and all and be in between the number of the cases in trishur was also increased and our hospital can you can you hear 
Yes, ma'am. We can hear. Yeah. Yes, your audio. Okay, okay. Uh, the number of cases was uh, increased so far, uh, so far, and now it has decreased. And we are uh, in a state. We are getting cases frequently. And the first two cases that we have got was uh, altogether we have done so far. We have done four cases. That is two LSCs as well as two laparotomies. And the two LSCs that we have done in February. That is at the beginning of this outbreak itself. So we have to adjust with this, so many of the problems. Therefore, the our theater was a centralized AC that was. in four rows that is about 28 theaters all these are having the centralized ac with the laminar flows and all and some of the because it was uh, constructed some 20 24 years back the, all the some of the problems were also, also there with the ac systems and so the chance of infection was found to be very high so we are forced to find out a theater that is outside our theater complex itself so we converted two minor operation theaters of the op complexes of the gynecology department into two major covid ot so the um, we have constructed and made all the adjustments according to the central government's covid-19 outbreak guidelines so according to that the uh, we are we tried for an ideal airborne isolation room that is designed to maintain a negative pressure relate to the to the adjacent areas usually all of our theaters are having positive pressure ventilation with about 5 to 12 times that is uh, meters per uh meters of uh, this airflow movement and we have to make the negative pressure uh relative to decrease the number of infectious infections to the patients and it should be a well ventilated to limit the spread of the microorganisms from an infected occupant to the surrounding areas of the healthcare facilities and provides a general flow of air into the room the exos from these rooms should not recirculate in the hvac system all the modern buildings hospitals and all the constructions are having hvac system that is heating ventilation and the ac systems so since our building was not having that hvac system we have to find out a newer one for, to do the corona cases the hvac system is having the minimal adjustment to make it into a negative pressure uh, system so we have to we made it actually with the support of our biomedical engineer section instead the exos air typically moves in dedicated duct work to the ventilation stacks on the rooftop where the atmospheric air provides sufficient dilution to make the resulting air safe that is with the hvac system and the designated theater uh, has preferably a negative pressure theater if not available it is advised to switch off the ac and the donning and the doffing rooms are to be specified and the recovery room should have airborne isolation uh, spe specifically should have airborne isolation room and the proper decontamination of the rooms after the procedure also and the additional requirements that we have made for our uh, newer operation theater was hepa filters to control the movement of the airborne contaminants and it should have a self closing entry bay with an adequate seal thoroughly sealed floors ceiling walls and windows the fans and the ductwork to move air in desired directions and a monitoring system to adjust the pressures ideally theater should uh, contain the anesthesia team should include the senior anesthesiologist that should be the most experienced one and the anesthesia technician and the anesthesia consultant or a senior resident that should be inside the theater that is considered as the inside runner these are the that is to limit the number of the persons number of the participants inside the theater these are the minimum persons that are required and one resident can be kept as the outside runner so that the person should be to support the persons inside the operation theater so these are the positions where the um, anesthesia team should have stand this is the patient area at the first anesthesiologist this is the site for the technician and the machine can be kept here and the inside runner can stand here the fourth person that is the outside runner should stand outside the operation theater 
and minimum the other requirements are minimum staffing and the all staff should have the ppe including the head visors and the stop positive pressure ventilation as per as possible and there should be facilities for smoke extraction and intubation and extubation should be done preferably in the theater itself and the theater preparation should be have that is the dedicated operation theater for all categories that is category 1 means that is the patients who were diagnosed as having coronavirus is considered as the category 1 and the two category 2 patients are those in, in the quarantine period and the theater should be labeled as covid 19 ot and the anesthesia workstation should be covered with a transparent plastic drape and the ppe should include the set of uh, um, things that includes the protective gown the or co which covers all of the body with the proper size n95 mask the goggles double gloves boot wear face shield and for high risk aerosol generating procedures like intubation especially for the uh, operation theaters as well as for intubation procedures also ppe should be worn and these are the sequences of doing the donning as well as the doffing sequence that is before we start with the donning we have to remove all our ornaments watches etc and uh the first we have to wash and then wear the cap the shukur and rock in the gloves should be put cover all gowns mask goggles hood and outer gloves should be wired and all this should be done under the guidance of a person and you should not make any of the missing of any of the stages of don uh, donning and also same thing for the doffing also and the equipments should be kept ready are the machine check machine should be checked and the set the ventilator settings appropriate for the patients the mm -hmm. closed circuit is used preferably and the face mask hme filters that is minimum two hme filters are required that is one is between the tracheal tube and the breathing circuit and the other is at the expiratory limb and the anesthesia machine and the ambu bag should be kept ready preferably it should be kept outside and place all like equipments and the drugs in the covid tray and avoid handling the drug trolley during the case and the equipments are arranged in the covid tray as per the decision of the senior anesthesiologist after assessing patients away the other equipments that are to be kept ready are a way cart bronchoscope and the crash cart including the defibrillator should be kept outside the theater and to be handed over by the outside runner to the inner runner when necessary and the checklist for the av management equipments are the laryngeal um, the laryngeal uh, or pharyngeal airway and the nasopharyngeal airway the preferred size should be kept ready anatomical face mask the second generation supraglottic airway should be kept ready the laryngoscope preferably video laryngoscope and also the um um macintosh laryngoscope should also be kept ready the buji still at appropriate size uh, endotracheal tubes plasters syringe for cuff inflation nasogastric tubes tray for uh, zip locks bags should be available emergency airway kit equipments required for regional anesthesia and central line insertion if it is required and the main circuit and the jackson rays should be kept outside and the suction device also should be kept ready and the monitors that is adequate monitors should be checked and should be kept ready that is a non invasive blood pressure ecg um spo2 and the alarm should be kept on invasive monitors only if needed and if the usg is used cover the usg machine with the transparent plastic sheet so these are the um, the covid theater that is the senior anesthesiologist position that is the anesthesia technician as anesthesia assistant and this is the equipments that are to be kept outside with the second runner and as per as possible try to do the regional anesthesia case under regional anesthesia wherever possible because it requires an n95 mask 
it should be applied to the patient throughout the length of the stay in the operation theater and avoid high flow oxygen to prevent aerosolization. And the one problem that I have to highlight with the regional anesthesia is before uh, we have done the first two cases under regional anesthesia, that is that both cases were cesarean sections. But when we have done the case only, then only we have identified the problems with the regional anesthesia. When we do the case under general anesthesia, we have to do the intubation. Preferably, we have to do with the senior most experienced anesthesiologist, and we have to do it within 30 seconds, with, preferably with the video laryngoscope. But when we do the case with the regional anesthesia, the patient will be lying awake and the patient will be breathing continuously with preferably with an N95 mask. But if the patient starts talking something or if the patient is wants to convey such so as more of the aerosolization can occur and can occur. So in order to prevent that, we have modified the aerosol box into another one that I will discuss later. Uh, this is the aerosol box that we have kept for made preferably we have designed for keeping regional anesthesia that is it looks like just like an oxygen hood we can keep it over the face of the patient and the sides we have to seal with the plastic sheets after keeping the patient and but the problem is that we cannot convey the patient to the properly and we have to suck out all the expired gases through this tube to outside this is just like a hob of our um, uh, kitchen then so in order to reduce the rate of infections we have made a small exhaust fan inside this hood so that the gases will be sucked out that is the expired air can be sucked out and that can be eliminated out through and the other end of this one is connected to the exhaust fans that we will be showing it in the video and another thing that we have done uh, kept inside this hood is well, with the um, uh, once we start with the cases, we have to start with the HEPA filter and all, and with the exhaust fans. But that will be producing more of the sound, so we cannot convey properly to the patient during the surgery. So it was very difficult for the patient to convey to us. So we have made a uh, microphone inside this hood itself, and that will be connected. That is, both sides can be conveyed to the patient as well as the patient can be conveyed to us also. So with that, it was the conveyance as well as the regional anesthesia procedure was found made more safer to us. And this is our intubation aerosol box that I think most of uh, us are familiar now. That is, uh, to be uh, safe anesthesia, we have to practice and also stay home and stay safe. So I will be sharing the uh, our theater setup also with this. Okay. So the presentation is over, madam? No, no, no I had the uh, video also. Okay. Videos. Okay. Videos. Videos there, sir. Okay. Okay. Kenneth. Yeah, ma'am. You have to share your video screen now. Can you hear? Can you hear? Yeah, we can hear. We can hear, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. But video is not there. Video will come, sir. It will come. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Sukhdev Nak, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I got the number, Zoom number. Thank you. Ma'am, what happened, ma'am? No. Hello, ma'am, what happened? I think it is loading, taking some time. No, 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 we have already started, sir. No, but you haven't shared the screen. 
it's not visible ma'am you haven't shared the screen like yesterday shamsha please share that screen video yes i have sharing the screen Ma'am, press Alt S. Can you hear? Can you hear, sir? Yeah. Can you can hear you, but you haven't shared your screen. Can you it's see? It's audible, but the video is not. Uh, Ma'am, you haven't audible. shared your screen. Share content. Is it? Can you hear? Right. Can you see the? We can hear. We can see you. we can see you and we can hear you but not the not the video, not the video? you are not have, seeing the video your, you have no, your audio your screen not not yes, the video you have to, you have to no, no. the screen you are not seeing the video no no, 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 no. we are able to see you madam but uh, uh, slide share is not the slide is not seen. can you see here sir here yeah, is not, not a problem ma'am we just Go to that uh, uh, share screen button. Yeah. Click on that. You haven't done that. Start screen. Share screen. Share screen. Yeah. Share screen. Ah. Okay. Then select that video window. Video screen. Yeah. Right. Attending on a web camera. Record. Okay. Yes. No. Kiran Gera sir sharing something. वीडियो <laughs> Yes. Now, yes. Yes. Now you are. Ah, uh, now you are seeing. Now oh, yes. It has come now. Play it from the beginning, ma'am. Yes. Non medical college theater, Trishu. Now, ma'am. Bagya. उंड हेलो बर नहीं ले ओ अच्छा ओके ओके सो दिस इस अबर ओके दिस इस अबर स्टेराइल ओटे कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ स्टेराइल ओटे दिस इस द माइनर प्रोसीजर रूम सो वेयर बी आ कैन डू द माइनर ऑपरेशंस दिस इस द माइनर ऑपरेशंस थिएटर एरिया then the patient will come out this is for the 
in stomach setting area and the this is the restroom after putting the ppe rest in the the uh, the doctor scan rest here and this we have got the two operation theaters the operation theater 1 and the surgery and the light specialties and the other is for the um, gynecological procedures that is cesarean section this is the hepa filter that we have then we have got the two air conditioners of 2 ton each to produce adequate cooling effect and we have got the two exhaust fans on top and one at the bottom for this is this is the work and a sister work station with the scavenge, scavenging system that we have work station and uh this is the that is the aerosol box one this is for the general anesthesia for the fungi this is the one that is for the oxygen food just box for regional anesthesia and this is this is the smoke test that is how the aerosol from this is sucked and it is sucked out and it is sucked out through the tubing to the exhaust fan this is with the exit this will be connect when we do the patient when we do the cases under regional anesthesia this is called as the ashley aerosol elimination system ashley for as dr ashish and the dr lijo both of them have designed this box this is the aero, uh, airway trolley that is for it. and this also we have to keep it with the cupboard this is the second operation theater and this is the cells ac the hepa filter the ac and the exhaust fan you can see poster and proof as well as one exhaust fan at the bottom and this is the most sort of plastics this is the hepa filter for the inflow of fresh air into the room from the outside that is from the outside and it is goes fixed fitted at the ceiling and this is directly connected to the outside from where the fresh air is sucked in and this is connecting the both operation theaters and this is connected to the so after the surgeries that that is in because of the high amount of the high volume of the sound that is produced by this hepa filter the patient should be considered the the microphone system with that the patient can convey to us and the hepa filter produces more of the sound and this is the doffing area this is the common doffing area for the staff as well as for the doctors and this is the doffing area with a separate bathroom facility center all and this is the this is the common doffing room and the doff equipment etc are put in the respected bins for disposal this is it and we have got adequate toilet facilities also with this but the doctors as well as the nurse can take and the uh, straight course which will be brought from the uh, ot by us another person or attendant they will bring their dresses here and from there they can go out this is these are the uh, these all these arrangements that we have all these arrangements that we have done in within one week and this is created with um, our biomedical wing has done all these works that we have done uh, within one week we have made this theater facilities okay, okay. can you hear sir yes, yes. thank you madam it's yes, no. it's over okay. madam Yes, it is finished, sir. Finished, sir. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Venkatigiri, shall we yes, start taking the questions from the chat? 
Pranam Maxwell, sir. Bala Bhaskar. Yeah, can we start taking the questions which are there yes, in the yes, chat for yes, next? Yeah, yeah, you you can you can. We will make this question yeah. in ten minutes. The remaining questions we can make at the end. Ten minutes oh. we will have that pattern of this topic. Then we will go to Suresh Nair at eight fifteen. Okay. okay, so we will restrict. We will cut down by about five minutes. Um, for about ten minutes, we will take the questions. So one thing is, I had suggested our colleagues to uh, have the questions only related to the particular session. There are additional questions which have come, so we will not take them. So one common question, at least from four or four to five of our colleagues, is about the AC. So people have asked, uh, with AC on, is it possible to stay with uh, the PPE for six hours continuously? And somebody has said. That, um um for, for example um, do we uh, actually should have a exhaust system actively going put an exhaust fan for uh, in the ot itself directly isn't it difficult to work without ac in an ot when there is no ventilation at all so these are some common questions we have already discussed but can you briefly answer them for all the yes, questions sir. Sir, with the yeah, ppe sure. it is very difficult to stand without ac in this uh, ot and for that we have made a high uh, in the 400 square feet ot we have kept four ton ac so to get some amount of uh, cooling because with the, when the, with the hepa filter the air is coming at a high flow and the, with the exhaust fan it is going out as well so it will be more um, heat the temperature is remaining at a little bit higher and to begin with we had only one ac but we have increased the cooling effect by adding another AC. So yesterday we have done another laparotomy that lasted about for about three, four hours, and it has produced some amount of cooling, and it was not that distressing just like the previous one. So with this previous added one, it is uh, we have to increase some amount of cooling also because otherwise the uh, doctors as well as the staff cannot remain in that area. So it will be very really exhaustive if we are not switching on the AC. But that is, along with this, this negative pressure system itself, some amount of cooling was produced. So suppose if it is a centralized system with the negative pressure uh, technique, the cooling, some amount of cooling will be there, not like a centralized system, but the temperature of the room is a little bit higher. So we cannot tolerate this hot atmosphere for a long period. We are giving this, uh, we are switching this AC and we are keeping with the AC. So it was yesterday, it was a little bit good for the, uh, for the doctors as well as for the staff. <coughs> four hours of surgery, it will be very difficult. Yesterday's case was a laparotomy. That is uh, uh, resection anastomosis they have done. Yeah. It's not much complaint from the staff side yesterday. So far. Okay. That's a good system. I think uh, yeah. that satisfies the many queries yeah. there. There have been multiple questions on intubation and extubation, but we'll take it and pass it on to Dr. Suresh Nair when he takes it up. But there is one question. Uh, is it related to the, uh, the filters? Somebody, one of our colleagues has asked, how effective is a viral filter on the aerosol? Next, is there a difference between HME and HMEF filter? And third one is related to sterilization of the aerosol box. The sterilization of the aerosol box, uh, can you take, madam? Uh, sterilization of the aerosol box, the microbiology people says that we can, give, um, we can clean and wash with the 0.5% hypochlorite solution for about 30 minutes. We have to uh, fill it and keep it uh, inside this 0.5% uh, uh, hypochlorite solution. Then we have to take it out and we have to wipe with the alcohol-based solution. And then we can dry it up and we can use it again. The uh, filters are more effective, they say, like that. To prevent that, we are adding the HME filter on both sides to uh, at the um, uh, intubation, that is, the, with the, at the expiratory um, valve as well as the uh, between the endotracheal tube as well as the uh, circuit. In fact, I can add on here, madam, three, three filters are advised nowadays. Yes. Usually three filters. Uh, yeah, one, to expiratory limb, one to the expiratory limb, one yeah. at the endotracheal tube itself, Endotrical. the proximal part of the endotracheal tube. Yeah. And the addition question was about HME and HMEF, uh, the filters that are being used. So yeah. I can 
Yes, madam, you can you can clarify or shall I add on? Yeah, okay, sir, if you if you are, you can you can add, sir. Sir, can I, Dr. Balabaskar, sir? Yes, sir, sir. See, uh, about this HME and HMEF, there are no issues. Uh, we have to go with uh, heat and moisture exchanger with viral filters, which cut down up to 95 to 90 more than 95% of the viral farming. And uh, no confusion, we should not go with heat and moisture exchangers, but heat and moisture exchanger filters. Second thing was about cleaning of the intubation boxes. See, they are uh, around two feet by one and a half feet and having a container and dipping it, uh, a so bigger container so, where yes. you have to dip it, it's practically uh, difficult. It is, uh, difficult also. A lot of uh, hypochlorite solution is also consumed. So the microbiologist, after discussing with them, they say that you wipe it with the uh, uh, 0.5 to 1% of hypochlorite and then wash it with uh, soap and water, then isopropyl alcohol and then keep it dry. That should suffice. Third thing about uh, exhaust fans was, yes, exhaust fans, we have to use it, but, but big thing is that we have to ensure that there is no adjoining uh, OT or other... Uh, human beings who are around that uh, building. So preferably, if possible, we should locate our OT on the topmost floor, the COVID OTs, if it is possible, if it is possible, so that uh, no other persons are exposed. But if yes. we are uh, on the ground floor or there are adjoining buildings, we have to ensure that uh, we are not causing harm to the other individuals. The best Excellent. would be, the best would be to talk to your engineers where there is a central air conditioning, ask them to cut it off. And uh, this central air conditioning system is uh, only supplying it to the two OTs, uh, which are earmarked for the COVID OT. Otherwise, then uh, we have to bear it uh, with the split ACs and exhaust fans away from the habitants. So we have made our theater in the first floor of the uh, building. Excellent. Yeah, and that was towards the one end of the building. Very After nice. That, there is a bare area is there. So there yes. is no problem of uh, accidental uh, coming. Uh, yes. The, that is the air yes. dilution is occurring. Very that's nice. Right. That's Very a standard nice. recommendation. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. Navin, for the input. And uh, of course, HME filters, uh, um, I can just convey to, because this has been the common question in the last four or five programs I've attended. Yes. There is a model from Fisher Pickel, especially. So yeah. it, is more, it is claimed, of course, I, I cannot vouch for uh, any brand or any company. It is supposed to be it's very effective. Are available. Fisher, Fisher Pickle brand. They have got about three yeah. models. So uh, our colleagues can uh, no, uh, just go through the Google and try to get the details and approach them. So, but always advisable to use them. And uh, I can take uh, another one or two questions here. So simple, they are related to OT only because we are talking about the arrangement here. One thing is once a personnel have donned PPE and started the case, they should not ideally leave the OR without doffing. What is your practice? Usually we have done only four cases. We, uh, yeah. no, uh, no staff has gone out with the PPE outside. Okay, because it's a short duration basically. Like yes. Healing. But so, yesterday's case was long, sir. It was about uh, three and a half hours. Three and that half. is rejection and osmosis. Okay, okay. No. So, even then, they are all were standing inside itself. But yesterday, uh, yeah. some of the some cooling hours there. Okay. They can so tolerate that, the heat with the PPE. Yeah, difficult. Can I make yeah. a comment? So one more question here is one more question that has come is for example, we I can I can again recommend to our colleagues, please go to WFSA website. There are many links with respect to the utilities as anesthesiologists. One of them is also related to obstetric anesthesia. So there's a question here. What are the precautions done to protect the neonate soon after the LSCS in the OT and also during shift to the neonatal OT? I see you. The baby was received immediately and there is a uh, baby resuscitation area inside the corridor itself. Okay. From, there, we have the, from there, we have shifted the baby to the outside. Okay. What the about the shifting? Yes, shifting yeah. after immediately we have, the sisters have attended it and then immediately we have shifted to the newborn. That is separate newborn resuscitation area, separate labor room is also attached to this OT and uh, all the facilities are there, sir. Separate labor room is there, separate yeah. neonatal resuscitation area is also there. So yeah. when the uh, cesarean is there, we will inform the team to come and receive the baby. 
and then immediately we will uh, shift that is uh, some about uh, 100 meters this not 100 meters some 10 to 25 meters distance only from the this yeah. corona operation theater all these are separately we have constructed okay okay thank you thank thanks a lot uh, um, i think uh, probably one or two questions are remaining there is lot of overlap as i told you so some of the questions could be answered by dr suresh and later on uh, the third speaker so some one by one one of our colleagues has asked soda lime to be disposed of after each ga case is ideally it? ideally they say yes. it should be disposed yeah yes. everything to be disposed yeah. and uh, i had a question uh, what about the cables the monitoring cables which come nearer the patient do you advise it to be covered with the, the plastic through and through the leads they all remove it Yeah. And the uh, SpO2 monitor, we are cleaning it, sir. Okay. They have chloride solution as well as this, and the all other monitors. The BPA cup. The cables, pulse oximeter cable, and everything. Pulse oximeter cable, we are cleaning it, sir. With the have chloride solution. Yeah. Hypochlorite, or you can use seventy percent right. of our regular alcohol based solution. Alcohol based solution. Any uh, microbiology people advise us to use the alcohol based solutions. That will be sufficient, and better to wash it with the detergents. Any yeah. detergent you can use. Yeah, say, so without without damaging the connections in between. Yeah. Okay. Is there a policy of or a, or a protocol of shifting the patients outside the OT post extubation? Shifting. Shifting post extubation. Yeah. As far as possible, yeah. we are keeping the patient inside the OT itself, sir, because there is no uh, separate area for to keep. Because if we are keeping the patient outside, also we have to continue with the PPE and all. everything and a separate team should also be there so as far as possible we are keeping the patient inside the ot itself till the patient recovers completely and we have got uh, four uh, wards that is our one of our building exclusively is made for our hospital is considered as the covid ot and we have got a separate wards for uh, diagnosed uh, patients suspected cases and also we have got two icus for the multidisciplinary icu for uh, 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 quarantine patients and positive patients also we had one icu and four wards are there that is to pay, to keep the patient with this uh, sari that is severe acute respiratory infections we had one ward the positive cases we will be keeping it with the, and the suspected cases all this is separately we are uh, uh, arranged so depending upon the type of the patient according to the individualization of the patient we are shifting the patients okay so the current recommendation broadly is you wait for Total recovery of the patient. Yes, both as far as possible, we are keeping it. Yeah, in keeping fact, the possible, yeah, get the PSU nurse into the OT and the same anesthesia who who has attended inside yes. the OT. We go with they the patient. They will be attending the patient in our setup. So to conserve the resources and as well as to avoid the yes. risk of try to minimize the number of persons attending the case. That is our policy, yeah. sir. Okay. Thank so, you, Dr. Baskar. Just to add on to the points that you expressed. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Baskar, so all the yes. monitors can be covered with the transparent plastic or monitors, electrocautery and all, so you can touch yes. with your gloves directly. So the droplets will not form on the monitor and all those things. Very difficult to yes. clean subsequently. You can put a transparent yes. plastic cover and dispose of after each case. Yes, we can cover it. That, that, yeah, I, I got that point. The current again, the advice is uh, don't be miserly with respect to use of the gloves now. So, for example, you touch a patient for some procedure or checking the IV line. Use it and dispose it up. Then yeah. intubation, then dispose up and wear a fresh cloth. So these are some of the steps which uh, can minimize the risk of contamination of the tubing and the anesthesia equipment and devices. Immediately after using any procedure, dispose the gloves. That's it. Gloves and add more and yeah. more. Okay, yeah. okay, uh, uh, Doctor uh, Venkat Giri, can we close this session? Thanks a lot. Thank you for uh, the nice presentation. <laughs> Uh, to our colleagues, because we have got limited time, we won't be able to take questions beyond this. So I will request our next speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Suresh um, Nair, regarding intubation and extubation. Sir, please you can start. Can you see all of you see the slides? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot to Binil, Dr. Nazar, and the team for giving me this opportunity to talk about intubation and ventilation. now basically what i'm going to talk today is what we practice in our hospital now there will be some overlap over what dr shamsud has said some controversies may also be there which is in answers so uh, how do i change my slide next 
okay uh, i'm going through the i mean rushing through the introduction we all know that it's a very uh, infectious disease there is something called the ro for every virus the ro for uh, the covid virus is 2 to 3.5 which means it is highly contagious in our society and uh, the one thing i want to tell you is that it is not only a risk for the patient it is also a risk i mean for the doctor who is attending the covid patient it is also as much a risk for the patient because many of these patients who are going to come to your ic or ot are going to have very low saturation and one thing i want to stress here is the pathology of ards is different i mean in the in covid patients are very different from that of general ards patients that we see however luckily for us 80% of the patients have only mild illness only 5% of the patients actually require icu care and about 1 to 2% they will require intubation in the in, in and ventilation now the mortality varies from different regions uh, the new england journal article that came out first showed a mortality rate of only 0.67% which rises to 13 to 13% 13.2% if i remember correctly when the age of the patient is above 80 80 80 what what i will do in the next few minutes is divide the chart to into sound kettile preparation of uh, how we prepare the ot which i discussed uh, so also already talked about it anesthetic induction and intubation intubation and no explain unexpected difficulty when you come across what do you do predicted difficult intubation and then i look about i talk about uh, how to ventilate a patient not the icu ventilation but what we can do in the theater a few words i will also if there is time and balvaskar doesn't ask me to stop about using anesthesia ventilators for as icu ventilators what are the problems associated with that and finally we'll come to the next Now like preparing the operating rooms. Now, as we had already discussed, it is very important that we keep uh, a separate OT, COVID OT. It becomes a lot of problems. Becomes less. The cleaning can be easier. The equipment that is required in that theater can be uh, kept aside in that separate theater. Ideally, a COVID ICU should be a negative pressure operating room. Unfortunately, nowhere in the country we have negative pressure operating rooms because. unlike what uh, uh, what what uh, uh, the uh, dr shamsul has said that creating a, uh, a negative pressure room it is extremely difficult to create a negative pressure operating room because the room has to be cool the inflow should be less than that out the outflow maintaining the circulation in the room which is very very difficult unfortunately in the country we don't have a negative pressure covid room now the second thing that uh, tells you which is the ic you want to choose if you have a series of the operating rooms some of them have got a scavenging system some do not have a scavenging system ideally a covid ic be an active pressure with a scav uh, sorry uh, a scavenging system it yeah, have a truck intubation trolley and disposable kit available in that now before we actually take the patient patients into the operating room somebody from outside either in the aed or in the ward has to see what is the likely difficulty in intubating the patient and this has to be transferred uh, transferred the information has to be transmitted to the ot team the choice of anesthesia has to be decided as we all discussed earlier regional anesthesia or blocks are always preferable to general anesthesia and i'm not going to details of the appropriate pp that it has to be worn worn properly but what i would uh, insist on is that we should have a buddy system that a second person should tell whether you have uh, donned the uh, appropriate pp properly and always remember double gloving is very very important by team members now how do you take the patient into a theater now uh, there should be minimal staff required for intubation of the, uh, of the, of the uh, intubation of the patient now what we do in our operating rooms is that when we take a patient inside the theater only three people enter the theater the two anesthesiologists and one anesthetic technician or a nurse anesthetist who can come in all the other people do not enter the theater so as to avoid contamination i mean uh, exposure of these people to the aerosol that is generated during the uh, uh, during this period the remaining staff genders only after a period of 20 to 30 minutes now the question is why 20 minutes or 30 because when we use a hepa filter in the room it takes a uh, bit an uh, uh, fresh gas flow or air exchanges about 20 to 25 which is normal or standard for any operating room it takes about 20 minutes for the wash out of the gas or air in the in an operating room so you intubate the patient after 20 minutes during which we can utilize the time for putting lines or giving blocks then the rest of the team actually comes in and starts preparing the equip, uh, equipment on the other hand if the exchanges are much less for example the air exchange is only 12 per minute 
that means we have to wait for an hour before the rest of the team can actually come inside. Now, what is the equipment required? Standard equipment, but make sure you have an ETCO2 and an SPO2 available. A video laryngoscope is, uh, is preferable, but not absolutely indicated. You can use also a normal laryngoscope. Again, bougie and a slit is very, very important. It should be available. And a super glot uh, glottic airway device should be inside the operating room. Uh, front of uh, neck airway device, you not necessarily be inside the theater. It should be available. A runner should be available, as she said, uh, as uh, Dr. Shamsa said, should be available immediately outside the operating room. Now, the most important thing, intubation should be by the most experienced person. Now, we have already, many of us have seen through WhatsApp, the various devices, including the box that was ju just shown. Now, I'm an old timer, if you can call me, but I do not believe that these boxes actually work well. The first time, it is going to take time. What is important is that the most experienced person should put the foot uh, tube into the patient at the first attempt. Remember that in such situations with the with your uh, goggles and your uh, face cover, it becomes very, very difficult to intubate the first time. So get the tube in at the first attempt without trying any gimmicks. Now, all equipment in uh, 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 in the OT should be sorry. in the uh, all the equipment in the theater should be completely covered by transparent dressing uh, so that you uh, which I'll show in the next few uh, minutes the other important thing that we have to understand is that when we don all these things the voice that comes out of us becomes a little muffled so close loop communication is very very important you can do it in two ways Write your name on the label uh, when you uh, when you don the, uh, the impermeable uh, uh, things. Second thing is that when you give an instruction to your junior or your colleague, ask that person to repeat it back to you so you know that the person has understood what you're actually wanting to say to that person. Now, this is how we prepare our COVID OTs. As you can see on the left side of the screen, the entire workstation along with the uh, OT uh, monitors as well as the uh, ventilator screen on the right side we have the we have the, the uh, what do you call the anesthesia card and we also cover all the other equipment in the theater for example the left side you have the cautery and the right side the laparoscopic equipment the only thing that we do not cover is the main screen which is surgeon see because we do not want any distortion of the figures an important thing, when we cover these things, remember that it should cover three sides. Leave the back of the equipment open because all these equipments generate heat and the heat has to dissipate. And if you cover it completely, it may result in some short circuiting or uh, burns that can occur in the, operating, in the operating room. So this is how we prepare our theaters before we take the patient in. Now, patients, once they come either from the emergency department or in the ward, goes directly to the theater, do not stop the patient in the receiving area. All handovers should take place directly over the phone. Patient goes straight into the theater so as to minimize the exposure. And the patient should always wear a face mask. If he requires oxygen, the oxygen should be placed over the face mask. Face mask. If the patient is actually coming from, from, uh, uh, from the ICU, it is always preferable to intubate the patient in a negative pressure isolation rather than bring it to the theater and then intubate the patient. And uh, the scavenging system, as I said, every theater should have a scavenging system, especially when you have a COVID, uh, COVID OT. Now, if you don't have a scavenging system, it's not very difficult to create a scavenging system because most of the biomedicals that are attached to hospitals will know how to create a simple passive scavenging system in the, in the operating room. How do about, now we go to the next step, anesthetic induction and intubation. Rapid sequence intubation is what is generally planned. Now, the role of Celix Menu is very controversial. Actually, it is not required unless you have an expert uh, associate who's going to help you. Pre-oxygenate the patient for three to five minutes using low flows, less than five liters of oxygen per minute. During this time, do not ask the patient to, uh, 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 to hyperventilate or deep, uh, take deep breaths because both these generate aerosol, aerosol and can uh, increase the risk of infection. Again, important, do not try high-flow high nasal cannula or NIV before intubation of the patient. So these are absolutely not required. Give the patient enough time to completely uh, the oxygenate or remove the carbon dioxide and nitrogen from the, I mean, remove the 
uh, nitrogen from his lungs by adequately or pre-oxygenating this patient. <clears throat> when you place the oxygen mask, always place an HME filter over the mask, between the circuit and the mask, and the mask. And optimize the patient position before you start inducing the patient. If the, if the patient is obese, put a ramp up the patient. If you want to give a little fluids extra so that there is no panic because of falling blood pressure, give an extra fluid before you actually start the patient. Anesthetic induction, any of the drugs can be used. <coughs> however, however so ketamine is one drug that they don't use generally. But then if your patient is cardiovascular, unstable, even ketamine can be used. Rocuronium 1.2 milligram per kg or succinylcholine is what is required. Do not bag the patient after the, after the muscle relaxant is, is given. Now, very important, as you can see in the figure, use the method that is called two people, two-handed ventilation should be used. Use both hands to hold the mask firmly over the patient's face so that there is no escape of gas around, uh, gas around the mask. This is very, very important. So your second person ventilates the patient while you hold, you hold what is called the VE grip to hold the mask firmly on the patient's face. Now, when do you apply this mask and uh, apply it firmly? Only after the patient is completely anesthetized and lost consciousness. Now, uh, uh, people say that video laryngoscopy is best uh, used for intubation. Yes, it is a uh, thing. But also remember that if you're not used to video laryngoscope, it is easy to see the larynx, but difficult to put the tube inside. So as far as possible, use a bougie or a stillet to intubate the patient. Now, when you remove the bougie, make sure that the secretions from the patient does not spill over to your colleague who is standing nearby. And one of the techniques which I can easily tell you is that because you're wearing a double glove, as you remove the laryngoscope after intubation, you slide your gloves over the uh, over the laryngoscope and put it into the receiving uh, receiving bag. As far as possible, use a suction-aided endotracheal tube because the suction aid can be used continuously throughout the anesthesia period and uh, so that secretions, the minimum secretions are there in the throat which can generate aerosol in the, in, in the post-operative period. The first thing that you do after you introduce the endotracheal tube is inflate the cuff before you connect the patient to the ventilator. In when, because we are not going to auscultate, in, to increase the, in, uh, insert the tube up to 22 centimeters in men and 20 or 21 in, the, in females, depending on the uh, 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 neck. So how do you confirm endotracheal intubation? Bilateral chest movement, look at the ETCO2 whether it is coming properly. You may look at the SPO2, but not always reliable because especially in patients who are very severely hypoxemic, it may take some time for the SPO2 to come up. And if you're still not uh, aware of what to do, I mean, uh, not sure of what you're seeing, a lung ultrasound can help you to identify whether the tube is in position. But do not auscultate for two reasons. One is when you wear all these gadgets, you cannot put your stethoscope to your to, uh, to your ear. And second thing is it also avoids coming too near the patient in the immediate post-operative in, after intubation. Now, attach your ETCO2 to a, the, the very important where you attach the ETCO2. As you can see from this figure, do, normally we uh, attach the ETCO2 to the elbow. Do not attach it to that. You attach to the HME filter away from the patient. At this point, this will prevent contamination of your gas uh, uh, sampling system from the secretion that, or the, the, the virus that is present coming from the patient. So the first filter is always, the HME filter is always attached to the patient. Uh, near the patient end and pass a nasogastric tube if you think it is required so that you can avoid further manipulation in the, later on in the surgery. If you want to do a COVID testing and tracheal, tracheal secretions are required, this is the best time to do it. And once you settle everything, put your lines if you want to do it or you want to give a block for pain relief, do all that and allow the rest of the team to come into the operating room 20 minutes later. Now, what happens if you go have an unexpected difficult airway? Now, the uh, difficult airway society has actually modified their uh, protocols and they said, do not try more than three, three times at, at attempting intubation. At every attempt, declare the difficulty and failure. Between these attempts, what you can do is either generally back the patient with bag and mask method or use a supraglottic airway device to ventilate the patient. So you failed once, put an SGA, Second generation LMA you can use and then ventilate the patient, attempt again, but 
but not more than three attempts at ventilation. Now, the uh, guidelines, I hope it is, uh, all of you can see it properly. It says three attempts at intubation, a further three attempts at putting a supraglottic airway device and ventilating the patient. Now, once that is done, you can, uh, if you succeed in ventilating the patient, you can decide whether you want to awake the patient, awaken the patient, or try intubating the patient again through the supraglottic airway devices. On the other hand, if your SGA is not functioning properly, then you have to go through what is known as the front of the neck airway access. There are some new techniques that they have mentioned. It's a simple thing. Use a scalpel through the cricothyroid membrane parallel to the skin crease at the neck, rotate it 90 degrees and pass the bougie through that and the tube can go immediately after. This is a very simple. It takes you about 30 to one seconds to one minute to put the endotracheal tube. On the other hand, if you have a predicted airway difficulty, now if you know that the patient is going to have a difficult airway, one is we all look at the fibro-optic bronchoscope, but there are many problems associated with it, especially uh, when you want to topicalize uh, the upper airway or uh, or give a transtracheal uh, installation of uh, lignocaine. Both of these can generate cough in the patient. So a lot of aerosol generation is going to take place. But if you find that is the only way to intubate, with due precautions, you can go ahead with fiber optic bronchoscopy. The other option is use an FGA or the supraglottic airway device and through that pass the endotracheal tube and see whether you can get into the patient's lungs. <clears throat> Regional anesthesia considerations, we have all gone through it. Uh, we have discussed this partly. That is the important thing uh, to remember is that the, the rest of the team, except the anesthesiologist, there is minimum requirements for protection in terms of you have to use an N95 mask, but uh, uh, the usual things are required. But as far as the anesthesia team is concerned, remember that regional anesthesia is not 100% sure. There is a chance that your technique may fail and you may have to use the general anesthesia again. So as far as the anesthesiologist and the team is concerned, you have to don everything, your N95 mask, head and neck cover, as well as the impermeable gowns has to be worn by the before you attempt regional anesthesia. Now, uh, there was some con there are some concerns that when you use a spinal and epidural technique, there is a chance that you're introducing virus into the central nervous system. That's called the central nervous system viremia. However, there is no scientific evidence as of now that doing this has, has got any implications. Now, patient has to wear a mask at all times with oxygen. Once a successful uh, epidural is, uh, or spinal is given, we always sedate them so as to quieten them and they don't talk, they talk too much. Regarding the type of spinal needles, they say that uh, pencil point spinal needles have some superiority over the cutting needle because the coring effect is less. So less chances that you're introducing virus in the central nervous system. If you're using an ultrasound for any of these regional blocks, cover the entire ultrasound probe with uh, uh, the, 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 this uh, covers before you use it. As far as obstetric is concerned, early epidural analgesia for obstetric patients is very important for two reasons. One is you can easily convert into a regional anesthesia in case cesarean section is required. And if you give adequate pain relief for, 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 for women, it is unlikely that they'll be crying in pain and uh, which of course produces more and more aerosol in the, in the labor room. So early epidural analgesia is what is promoted in, in these patients. Ventilatory management and anesthesia. Now, as I said earlier, the first thing that you do is inflate the endotracheal cuff before connecting the patient to the vent mechanical ventilation. Use a suction aid endotracheal tube, which you can use continuously through the perioperative uh, period. The first HMEF I've told you, it should be at the patient end between the endotracheal tube and the, and the circuit and the ETCO2 or the, the sampling line should be on, at the, and on the side away from the, away from the patient. The second HMEF can be connected to the expiratory limb. And the purpose of the second HMEF is to protect the ventilator from the virus that can come from the patients. Always, once you inflate the balloon, always look for air leaks. Air leaks can again generate more and more aerosol or airborne infection, which can be a problem. If your patient is sick and has a high PA, uh, plateau pressure or peak pressure, keep the cuff pressure at least five centimeters above about the peak pressure of the patient's airway. Now, if with great difficulty, you put an endotracheal tube, you have a difficult intubation, and then you find that the cuff is leaking, 
do not try to go back and reintubate the patient. Instead of that, pack the patient's throat and leave it at that. It is better rather than trying to uh, do the whole thing again and creating more uh, chance of infection. Monitor for tube displacement after every uh, manipulation. You do a suction if you want, okay, but then check the position of the tube. And as, I, as, as all of you know, use closed suction catheters. Now, if you want to do any form of airway manipulation, disconnect the patient or anything, there's a certain protocol that you have to follow. First thing is give additional analgesia and sedation as well as neuromuscular blocking agent. The first thing that you do is put the ventilator on standby mode. Allow the air that is contained or delivered to the patient to leave the patient. Then clamp the endotracheal tube. Now you disconnect the circuit with the endotracheal tube and the HME filter in together. So you disconnect in such a way that the circuit is separate, but the endotracheal tube is always attached to the HME filter. Now used, uh, uh, as I said, use closed suction. So this is the way in which you have to do any uh, intervention or maneuvering of the airway if it is required in the operating room or outside. When you connect, make sure that you push twist so that none of the connections become are disconnected during the perioperative period. If accidental disconnection occurs, again, follow the same protocol, stop the ventilator, put on standby mode, allow the patient's air to uh, come out. I mean, if it is disconnected, it's already come out, clamp the endotracheal tube with and, and then reconnect the patient back. One of the problems that we common find, commonly find, especially when you use a closed circuit system and HME filters, is the amount of water that gets locked into the logging into the circuit. Now, uh, the, remember that in a normal HME filter, in a patient, if you connect it, the water should accumulate only towards the patient. Head. This is the water that humidifies the patient at the same time traps the virus and uh, sink. However, in a closed circuit system, you'll find water accumulating on both sides of the HME filters. And this can cause a lot of problems, especially blockage of the HME filters. How do you diagnose that? One is, and, as well as cause clogging of the, uh, of the uh, soda line. Now look at the airway pressures. If it is going up over a period of time, it's an indication that the HME is getting filtered. And second thing is that you look at the uh, uh, expiratory tracings of the volume or the pressure, you'll find that there is an auto peep that is being generated. And this is an indication that the HME filters are getting blocked, in which case you have to change the technique. One of the techniques you can prevent to some extent is the, the filter that you keep near the patient then, keep it above the patient's uh, head level, and this will prevent too much of water accumulating in that, in that filter. How do you ventilate a patient? Low, always use low tidal volume. They all use only 6 ml per kg. Now, you adjust your respiratory rate to maintain a PCO2 of around 35 or 38 uh, millimeters of mercury. The plateau pressure should always be maintained below less than 30 centimeters of water. And what is recommended is that a minimum PEEP of five centimeters of water should be used. Now, how much of oxygen that should be used? You, uh, uh, so there are recent reports on ARDS patients which show that if you keep a very high PO2 in these patients with bad lungs, the mortality is much higher than patients who have uh, uh, a little lesser PO2 in these patients. So what is recommended? Uh, by the surviving sepsis campaign even today is that in these all these patients when you whether it is in the ICU or in the operating room maintain a saturation between 92 to 96 percent which is about 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury with the minimum uh, FiO2 that is required. Now uh, deviating a little I mean, there are lots of reports in the western countries at least where OTs have been converted into ICUs and anesthesia ventilators have been used as critical care ventilators. Now, let us see a few of the problems that we come across. The first one, as I said, is water accumulation. Now, water accumulation occurs because, remember that when you use closed circuits, what you're actually doing is that we are using very low flows, 0.5 to 1 liter. And that is possible only because the carbon dioxide absorbs, absorber removes the carbon dioxide and we are able to maintain the oxygenation. But it also causes too much of heating the circuit as a result of which water accumulates. Now, water accumulation can be reduced to a great extent by increasing the fresh gas flow. Now, the higher, the, if that is, at least the minute ventilation of the patient should be the fresh gas flow that occurs in these patients. Now, this adds to the problem in different ways. One is, you, uh, of course, you have to look for the uh, water accumulation in the circuit, but it also alters the set FiO2 because you have two things. One is the expired gases, which is coming back, plus you're adding fresh gas flow from outside, Together, we don't know what is the FiO2 is actually being received by the 
patient. Second thing is that uh, uh, frequent change in carbon dioxide absorbers are required, especially if the, too much of water accumulates in, this, in the circuit. And when you use such high flows, there's always, especially in theaters where we, have, where we have scavenging system, the scavenging system itself can get overwhelmed. Now remember that uh, the normal scavenging, the ability of the scavenging system is about 80 to 130 liters, if I remember correctly. The ability, that much of air can be removed by a scavenging system in an operating room. But when you have, when you use very high fresh gas flows, this scavenging system can be overwhelmed. And how do you detect it? You'll find that there's an inadvertent peep occurring in these patients. The other important thing is that when we use anesthesia machines and ICU ventilators, it has to be recalibrated every 24 hours, which means that, again, you have to patient, disconnect the patient from the ventilator, subjecting the patient to higher levels of uh, risk of hypoxemia. And finally, when we use do, do this, remove all the vaporizers from the circuit because somebody might inadvertently start an inhalation agent for these patients. Coming to the last part of my talk about extubation after the procedure. The extubation may be done in the OR or if you have a negative pressure ICU, you can take them to a neg negative pressure ICU and uh, extubate them there. Again, the reverse takes place. I mean, the reverse procedure takes place. The moment the surgery is over, ensure that all the team members uh, except the anesthesia teams remain in the OR, cover the instruments so that they don't get contaminated again. And then what we usually do, as you can see in the figure, is that we place a transparent uh, sheet over the patient, the small hole where the mask is there. Under that, you can place a mask if it is required. You extubate, the, uh, before you actually go into extubation phase, we give some antiemetics so that they don't retch in the post-operative period. We also give drugs like dexamethasone or lignocaine to suppress the uh, the cough reflex existing uh, that occurs in the immediate post-operative period. So the tube is actually removed from under the drapes and then through this hole we place a mask. Of course what is missing here in this figure is the fact that the HME filter is not attached. This is one of the earlier pictures we have taken during the COVID uh, incident. So we have not learned that mistake at the time. So you keep it over the patient and allow the patient to come out. The moment the patient is uh, awake fully Put a, uh, 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 you put a mask on the patient's face immediately no, after the patient with an oxygen mask. Question. Now, use, uh, again, once you extubate the patient, use low flows of oxygen, less than five liters. Per minute. Some people, instead of directly extubating, use what is called, uh, use a SGA. So you remove the tube, put an SGA device, and then allow the patient to come out. Now, this can be either way because you're doing another airway uh, 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 intervention. So the chance of infection can also be there. So we can decide what exactly you need to do. So in summary, COVID-19 is highly infectious. It's going to, there, to be there with us for some time at least. So most yeah. important thing, remember that PPE controls 80% of the problems associated with anesthesia. So wearing a, a N95 mask, a face shield, and uh, a neck and uh, upper part of the body cover so solves most of the problem. Regional anesthesia, whenever it is possible, have a separate ICU for COVID, name it as COVID hour, and have a separate set of equipment that you use in these patients and uh, plan for the procedure so that you don't get into trouble in the, uh, in, in the interim period. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. So we have uh, certain questions lined up here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can take it one by one. Some of them are uh, part of your presentation already, but probably they would need uh, some additional points also. You, all, you spoke about HEPA filters. Yeah. Even the, um, Dr. Shamshad also talked about it. Somebody wants to know, uh, does HEPA filter help removing coronavirus also? Does it filter the virus? The HEPA filters generally uh, reduce 99.9, .9, but the exact size, I think it is less than 0.3 micron size. 0.3 micron. And which means that virus can be removed. The size of the uh, coronavirus is 50 to 200 nanomicron. So I'm not very sure about the, this nanomicron. So I'm not very sure whether uh, the HEPA virus will remove all the, uh, which, uh, all the uh, coronavirus. The basically, what, what I want to tell about HEPA virus is that it has to come from the top to the table, and then it has to move out. The air has to move out. 
so i also disagree with the earlier comment that if you don't have a scavenging system somebody said we'll stop the ac in the theater mm -hmm. that is not a good idea because once you stop the the, the air conditioning system hepa filter system in the operating operating room the entire virus is going to remain there it is going to go as droplet fix on to different things and you are going to touch it so it's not a good idea to stop the ac i have discussed this with my infection control department also they said do not stop the ac under any circumstances hepa filter will remove it over a period of time Okay. So just to supplement, my my information is HEPA filter would be useful up to two microns duration. Two microns. Two up to two microns. So two microns and beyond. So the risk is yes, it may not filter the coronavirus. It could be it's it's of smaller size than two microns. So the risk is always there. I I'll talk uh, to my ID tomorrow itself about this. I'm yes, <laughs> you can send a clarification in our yeah. social media. Uh, sir, I have I have one doubt. You have told that to ventilate the patient uh, with a tight mask. Yes. Uh, should we do that or give put reoxygenation and give relaxant and uh, induction agent and without any ventilation induction? Can we take that risk whether that is better or ventilated? Because we, we, there is no aerosol. We can't have a very tight uh, mask or anything because it can produce aerosol. So uh, there is uh, uh, definitely no doubt that what you said is right. Because you are going to use succinyl colloidal rocuronium, 60 to 90 seconds, with your five minutes of pre-oxygenation, most of the patients will remain oxygenated. So do not use bag and mask ventilation or CPAP at this point of time. However, we have a subset of patients who are very sick, a severe hypoxemia, going to come to the theater. Maybe in those people we may have to use. Otherwise, as a general principle, do not use bag and mask ventilation at any time. Right. Barbara, no question. Of course, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a, it's a common question which is exchanged in social media, and you have touched touched upon it. But just to reinforce, uh, again, there is a question about NIV and HFLC. Is there a scope at all? Yes, we at the basic level we don't want it to be done. But is there a scope or requirement for use of NIV and HFLC? There is definitely a scope for HFLC and NIV. In fact. Uh, Some of the st early studies that has actually come out shows that HFNC may have an edge over NIV. So uh, the only thing that I want to say is that when the patient is on the uh, verge of going, you want to avoid going on on uh, mechanical ventilation. You can give a short period of HFNC or NIV, see if the patient is improving, and then uh, decide whether you intubate or go ahead with that. But these are all. Uh, as far as i know most of these data are based on ards patients not covid ards patients because i i am keep stressing about that because the pathophysiology and how hypoxemia in covid patients are very different from that of the normal ards patients that we see okay. so that's definitely a role for hfc and uh, yeah there is a role especially in icu management that, that yes. has been the norm in min, among our colleagues in india at least yes. we have delayed intubation as much as possible in many ards patients And when you talked about uh, uh, leakage of uh, intertracheal tube cuff, that has come from one of our members also that there was a leak, but he changed the intertracheal tube, and you advised packing the throat instead of yes. extubating the patient. Yes. yes. My comment here is yes. Uh, this is the first time we are uh, encountering COVID, but it is going to stay for generations together now. Of course, there will be some uh, vaccines which may come up, but we are going to face this problem for next three to four years. So, can we? Probably have a endotracheal tube with a double cuff. Definitely, we should think about that. <laughs> yes. So if one one leaks out, so we can have a second one. one. Yes, yes. Uh, exactly. That's the one that is there. And uh, one more thing is uh, related to the use of nasal cannula pre-intubation as a pre-oxygenation maneuver, uh, because we are talking about rapid sequence induction in the beginning. And we are talking about ventilating the patient before intubation. So, of course, it's a modified RSC. So, what I would also suggest is we can have a continuous, as you said, five liters per minute flow of nasal cannula to the patient before intubation. And pre-intubation, just after intubation, I think we can also continue the five liters per minute. Per That's minute. true. Yeah, that, that would be useful because yes. that has been a question from one of our colleagues here.
and uh, because you are we, we, the next section is basically on uh, the sterilization and disinfection part and we don't have time to discuss about icu and you are involved in icu management uh, just a question was with respect to the prone position of the patient and ventilation okay mm. in fact yes. uh, what i would what the covid uh, icu uh, protocol is most of the what i know is that you don't have to intubate the patient if you have a sick patient just prone him the results are as good as uh, avoiding a ventilation so unlike in ards patients there are many patients who are not intubated who are made like prone to improve the oxygenation and once you intubate a uh, very early proning is what is indicated nowadays as far as covid icu is concerned okay so that's an important consideration there yes. and with respect to icu because um, previously madam was talking about uh, the icus uh, the ot setup and uh, the management of cases in trishur medical college and uh, the recent evidences related to thromboprophylaxis in uh, covid positive patients so when such patients come to ot so should we be advising routinely thromboprophylaxis exactly that is again very very important because when you have a covid patients with a sick lung see the pathophysiology tells you two things one is the hemoglobin that the patient has cannot carry oxygen irrespective of what you do so you keep the hemoglobin high so as to maintain the oxygenation the second important thing is that it also causes an increase in the viscosity of the blood which is responsible for early thr thrombosis in the pulmonary uh, uh, blockage of the pulmonary arteries so uh, anticoagulating this patient is very very important it's not just prophylactic what you do as a dvt prophylaxis it has to be a therapeutic anticoagulation that has to, has to be initiated very early in the icu so th there is a, a suggestion for prone position without intubation also yes definitely definitely that's a take home that we can uh, try in some of the patients and i think we can take this one last question here sir very important which covers both the first and second parts sir is there any benefit in maintaining the patient on tiva alone should we try to avoid inhalation anesthesia should we try to avoid inhalation anesthesia altogether so is there any suggestion that inhalation again is bad i have not read anything that yeah. is, uh, that's why some assumptions yeah. is there you can also uh, have you read anything about uh, inhalation agents being bad in these patients dr shamshad madam no sir i haven't read inhalation we are giving inhalation agents to little bit that's all only thing is uh, oh, when you, uh, the inhalation agents like isoflurane or cofluorine it gives you a more cough reflex to uh, that sensation yeah, that can be avoided by giving uh, tiva to a great extent i agree with that yeah, purely a technical aspect but yes. otherwise we have, we have to be careful with the infection difference yeah with with a good kidney part that's all <laughs> So, sir, um, and the one question is again about supraglottic airway devices because it is commonplace nowadays. Everybody talks about supraglottic airway device. Do you advise, uh, for example, third generation Bosca or second generation? I'm sorry, I'm not very good at all this. Yeah, uh, this uh, supraglottic airway device. Somebody else can answer that. Okay, because practitioners are happy using it. So that was a question. So just to um, like um, um, respond to them. so yeah. basically if you decide that airway has to be secured and we want a tight seal so nothing better than endotracheal intubation with uh, cuff inflation so even though we talk about uh, so called the third generation now vasca mask or the second generation they never provide 100% protection against leak outside that's what we are concerned about so i think uh, we can go to the next next session so yes. thanks for sir mr suresh sir Uh, just a moment, uh, President and uh, uh, Dr. Navin, have got any queries or comments here? No, sir. I 100% agree with you that supraglottic airway devices, as of now, uh, uh, they do not score over tracheal intubation. And uh, but COVID has taught us a lot of things. Yeah. We have to be very very flexible. What was wrong yesterday is right today, and what was right yesterday is uh, maybe wrong tomorrow. Yes. so uh, when we started with covid 19 uh, patients coming in early intubation early intubation and now we are at the stage 3 weeks 4 weeks down the line delay in, delay the intubation and delay the intubation and yes i agree with sir uh, prone positioning and uh, they are good but i i have got some reservations about uh, high frequency nasal cannulas uh, because they may 
uh, add up to aerosolization. That is so true. that is a plus minus thing. So we have to be cautious in using uh, yeah. high flow nasal cannula and oxygen therapy. Yeah. Rest all the points have been nicely covered. Thanks a lot. Uh, Dr. Degree, you can invite uh, Dr. Madam uh, Nivedita for next session. Yeah, Nivedita, madam, welcome. And uh, uh, we may, many people had a lot of doubts about how to sterilize and all. I think you will uh, uh, explain everything in detail, and people are eagerly waiting. Uh, uh, first of all, Namaskar from the land of Lord Jagannath. Am I audible, sir? Yeah. Yes, Perfect. you are audible. I must thank ISA Kerala State Chapter President Dr. E. K. M. Nazar, Secretary Dr. Binil Isak Matthew. And President ISN National Dr. Murli Dhar Joshi, ISN National Secretary Dr. Nabin Malhotra, and ISA President elect Dr. Venkat Giri, and Chairman ISA Academic Committee Dr. Bala Bhaskar for giving me the opportunity to participate in the program. Thank you, sir. Okay. No, no, no. Uh -huh. I will find out. Ah, okay. Okay. Can I start? Please. Can I start? Please, please. Just play please, start. Start. Please, start. please start. Please start. Can I start? Am I audible? Yes, yes. yes. Madam, you are please audible. Start. Please start. Uh, can I start? Uh, the topic which I have been attempting to tell is the sterilization of the OT ICU equipment before and after treating the COVID. -19. The hospitals must prepare specific internal protocols and arrange adequate training of the involved personnel. And in our setup, we have also made protocols after this COVID 19. And it has been approved also in our hospital and in also government. So the aim is to, we should do the environmental decontamination, cleaning of the medical equipment, cleaning of the soil bedding, towels, clothes from patient with COVID-19, and cleaning and disinfection of the occupied patient rooms like OTs and ICU, and also the patient after the discharge and transfer. And prevent the environment contamination like respiratory situation. As you know, COVID-19 virus is very potentially survived and they remain for the several hours and days. So they are potentially contaminated and this virus should be clean before they are reused. So the so many antimicrobial agents are there and they are known to be effective against coronavirus may be used, which we are going to present. And established cleaning strategies should be used and it should be protocolized. So as you know, the all the precautions what we should do is the hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, cough etiquette, PPE according to the risk, safe injection practice like SART management and injury prevention, safe handling like cleaning and dispensation of the patient care equipment and environmental cleaning and safe handling and cleaning of the soil linen and the waste management. As you know, the best way to prevent the spread of the germs of the healthcare by use of the appropriate product and technique. And repeatedly we have been told and is coming in the media and everywhere. And it has been proved also that soap and water was done for 40 to 60 seconds is helpful. And alcohol- Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, Nevedita, ma'am, you have to run your slide full screen. Yeah, it is in the full screen. Ma'am, you have to run that slide, ma'am. Presentation mode, full screen. It, only the first slide is being repeatedly shown. Go to the next slide, ma'am. Ma'am, you have to click F5 button, full screen. Okay, change the slides at least first. Uh, again, should I go to the uh, uh, stair? Ma'am, just, no, 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 you have to run the full screen, ma'am. Yeah, it is in, the, in my laptop, it is full screen. Ma'am, just to share the screen again. That screen you have to share. Go to share screen. Just go to share screen and select that full screen. Is it is it visible? One second, ma'am. It is coming up. Yeah. Should I go like this? 
one second ma'am no it is coming to that top main screen only you have to run that full screen yeah now you run the run the screen yeah slide show click the slide show okay okay no ma'am still the same or you just scroll through these slides okay you go to the slide you are talking about no madam that's enough at least is it visible now you go to the slide which you are talking about now madam yeah. on the left side okay can i do like that yeah it's starting we'll observe madam go to slide 2 yeah visible no ma'am yeah yeah okay now in the bottom right hand okay. there, is a, uh, there is a symbol for full slide yeah this one no uh, bottom right yeah uh, ah yeah, glass ah glass before that 100 glass. the champagne glass picture is on the right side ah uh, yeah i thought it uh, you you one thing hello i mean uh, you just run the slide i will just request you because i have already sent to you can you do yes, that yes ma'am i'll do that i'll do that i'll do that i'm just doing that okay that's why i'll face trouble that's why actually any net problem will be there just show me the slides yes ma'am just a second just a, give me a second Double click. Yeah. Can I start? Yes, madam. Acha, once I tell uh, next slide, you kindly change. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No, Please. Yeah. Uh, next slide. I think I have covered this. Please change. Change. I have covered this all these things. Kindly change. Yeah. Uh, yes. So this hand has in that WHO five movements. One is before the touching a patient. and second is before cleansing or aseptic pr procedure third is after the body fluid exposure and fourth is after to the patient and fifth is after touching the patient surroundings next slide as you know this covid 19 theater or before starting the operation you must inform the theater in advance about the patient transfer and when you take the patient at least in that door you must write high risk warning and the operating surgeon has to be contacted in advance suppose you wanted any additional equipment and clean anesthetic equipment should be kept and there must be a team brief next slide and the team should assess the risk of transmission through the aerosol generation so the proper precaution has to be taken and before the ot staff going the pain mobiles or any personal belongings should not be taken to the ot and limit the number of the staff and full don pp should be owned by the anesthetic team all the time and you must touch as little as possible to avoid the fomites and stop positive pressure ventilation which my previous speaker have told and smoke evacuation for diathermy and other energy sources next slide so what are the personal protective equipment we generally use as you know disposable long sleeve waterproof coats and gowns ffp2 facial mask disposable head cap ptss ffp3 mask disposable double pair nitrile gloves eye protection and fluid repellent gloves to cover the elastic band of the gown and alcoholic hand hygiene solution and shoe cover next slide so this is a picture of the pp which you are going to use next slide 
so in a surgical patient management all the suspected or infected patient must be managed with the maximum attention and the transport must be protected and the infected patient must be moved as little as possible through the hospital and transfer route must be precisely planned and covid operation room must be dedicated as close as possible to the entrance of the block next slide so look at the picture here there are so many sectors transfer covid area entrance ot setup anesthesia surgery and recovery the person who will be transferring he should be full pp own and same personnel allocate to the single patient for all the different pages and once the patient inside the or no staff of this is out they shouldn't be allowed and the route as you know it should be fixed path and such as possible and away from the public sanitize lift and anywhere appropriate as required and set up of the waiting room for the patient admitted to the ed before transfer and materials as you know all the replace before starting the each procedure dedicated trolley or metal basket the bare necessary things should be there and whenever possible try to refill do not try to refill during the surgery and patient from the they are directly and quick to the operation theater and not move to the end of the recovery phase and as you know in the operating theater it should be closed after the patient entering and clear alert signal on the doors and material replacement by the pp equipped personnel from the outside are not allowed and the 25 exchange for the hours should be given next slide to summarize the disposable material should be preferred minimal material should be used for each intervention and the transport personnel same from the transport origin to the destination and once the patient has entered the or door must be closed the surgeon anesthetists nurses and technicians should enter in a timely manner to minimize the exposure and the person involved should not leave the operation theater during the procedure and high or air exchange cycles are recommended that is more than 25 exchange per hour and clinical document must remain outside the or next slide at the end of each intervention all disposable material must be disposed of and the electromedical services i they have to be clean and disinfected and ppe must be removed and disposed outside the or in dedicated doffing areas and all involved personnel after the thing is over whenever possible they should remove after the pp and everything they should sanitize soon and they should go for a shower and recovery phase after surgery must be done in the operation theater before transfer of the ward or icu next slide as you know the instrument which you use in the ot's and the devices decontaminated in normal manner in accordance with the manufacturer instruction will be there suppose you don't have the manufacturer instruction what are you going to do it so both laryngoscope handle and blades should either be single use or reprocessed in the css system and theater should be clean as per the local policy for the infected cases like different areas different policies are there and attention to the hand contact points or the anesthetic machine and theater not to be used for at least 30 minutes after the patient leaves if conventionally ventilated or 5 minutes if ultra clean ventilation is there next slide next slide yes ma'am it's the next slide only yeah so housekeeping surface they have got two factors like minimal hand contact like floors and ceiling and high touch surface which is a frequently we generally hand contact like your door knobs bed rails light switches walls of the patient room and edges of the curtain next slide and whenever you are doing cleaning all these things wear gloves when handling and transporting use of the patient care equipment and non critical medical equipment like stethoscope blood pressure cups dialysis machine and equipment knobs and contacts and 
these are taken as the non critical medical equipment next slide i'll be telling how you are going to sterilize all this usually only liquor cleansing followed by low to intermediate level disinfection and there is a chart is there for which instrument present what sterilization we should use next slide dedicated transport ventilator should be used and dedicated ventilator should be used in the operation theater for the general anesthesia please omit this next slide next slide next slide next slide next slide sir so no just before that before that before that just ha huh? no no next slide just after this yeah just after this and all potentially infected single use materials should be dis no please don't change sir ha huh? all potentially infected single use materials dispose up through irsw container and this reusable material should be decontaminated was right disinfected and sterilized as you know we have got electromedical equipment like ventilator radiological equipment must be clean with chloro derivative solution rinse and dry and then disinfected with chloro derivative solution in a concentration of more than or equal 0.1% next slide disposable materials like double gloves paper towel should be used for the cleaning anything disposable should be kept inside the or during the operation must be disposed through irsw containers even if not used next slide in a, if suppose the manufacturer has not given any instruction how to you how to sterilize then what you will do use the ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol 60 to 90% to disinfect the, the small surface rubber stoppers of multiple dose medication vial thermometer and occasionally external surface of the equipment like stethoscopes and ventilators next slide so sometimes it is very difficult to clean certain surface and equipment as the sir has told earlier we have to cover it so impervious material bag paper or plastic or fluid resistant covers are suitable for use as a barrier protection and cover mattress for the easier disinfection and remove this once the operation is over and perform a hand hygiene and once the next case will come please cover with a new sector next slide all anesthetic equipment supplies and medication must be used for only one patient exclusively if possible if the economy stand and the contact procedures which we will have be doing like skin or mucosa like video laryngoscope blade reinforced tubes anesthesia mask filters breathing balloons suction tubes catheters and expiratory carbon dioxide sampling tubes and water tapes try to use a single use if possible if the hospital can afford next slide all anesthetic equipment should be clean and disinfect the carbon dioxide absorber and also the circuit also try to replenish kindly try to remo remove and for the new sec new sector you can use for the other patient next slide the ventilator of the anesthesia machine how will you disinfect so some says that the recommendation is that ventilator of the anesthesia machine consists of so that either you disarms assembly or sterilize with high temperature if feasible or you disinfection with 2 to 3% hydrogen peroxide using a disinfection machine and surface of the anesthesia machine laryngoscope handle non disposable equipment you can disinfect with 2 to 3% hydrogen peroxide or 2 to 5 g per l chlorine disinfect wipes or if nothing is available the most easiest is the 75% alcohol wipes which we very commonly use next slide the anesthesia cart and other anesthesia facility must be cleaned and disinfected 
and if you while making a protocol you should see that there should be a checklist that how many instrument has gone and how much has been disposed of and how much has been sterilized so a checklist and it tracks the cleaning and disinfection of the equipment and facility in a timely manner next slide in the ot room suppose a patient covid patient has been with pneumonia has been has come and disinfected what should you do just 2 to 3% hydrogen peroxide spray wiped with 2 to 3% hydrogen <clears throat> peroxide and 2 to 5 g per liter chlorine disinfectant or if you have got lot of availability of the 75% alcohol you can use it and the transfer bed used for the patient should be clean or disinfected with 2 to 5 g of liter chlorine disinfectant next slide as you know the equipment and the surface are contaminated with patient skin blood and bloody fluids uh, can spread infection so it is mandatory to disinfect with 1% sodium hypochlorite or alcohol based disinfectant like your stethoscope blood pressure cups monitor laryngoscope blade stretchers backboards immobilization devices shelves and door handles next slide look at the chart ha, this chart in our hospital we have kept all these three to four charts accordingly we do like that so test test in the stethoscope it should be clean with detergent and water should be wiped with alcohol based swab or spirit swab before each patient contact bp cuff and cover cuff should be wiped with alcohol based disinfectant and regular laundering is recommended and thermometer should be stored dry in individual holder clean with the detergent detergent and tepid water and wipe with alcohol rub in between patient use and injection and dressing trolley to be cleaned daily with detergent and water after each use should be wiped and disinfected next slide so this is the arch for the guidelines of the aims what they do 1% hypochlorite for the ventilator circuit oxygen mask nasal prong suction jar tubes blood and body fluids stain instrument and linen for 15 minutes and 10% hypochlorite for decontaminate of the large blood, large blood still more than 10 ml for 15 minutes and 0.1% hypochlorite for the infected patient bed in isolation room or icu room for 10 minutes and detergent soap bar which you can use for the general floor cleaning for 5 minutes next slide as for the aims guideline also they use also bacillol spray the, the composition is the propranolol and ethanol they do a perform spray for the surface cleaning patient care equipment non easy accessible place of cot and wheels and the contact period is 5 minutes and 7%, 7 lysol that is most least infective we can say the antiseptic is for the toilet cleaning in non icu area and the contact period is 10 minutes and as you know for the hand washing we are using the alcohols and the, that is propranolol and ethanol for the hand rub purpose every time in the media it is coming just for 20 seconds next slide as for the gipma protocol they say that high touch surface should be disinfect with hypochlorite 0.5% contact time 10 minutes twice floor same hypochlorite with 10 minutes once and wall and ceiling same concentration 10 minute once daily linen also same concentration 30 minutes as and when toilet same concentration 10 minute twice and corridor same concentration 10 minute once and non critical equipment you can use alcohol wipes and after each use next slide in the icu the air brown precautions recommended only for the aerosol generating procedure so you have to be very careful like open suction of the respiratory tract intubation and bronchoscopy preferably patient should be in a single room and natural ventilation with 160 liter as per patient if negative pressure air change for the uh, is available you can use in our hospital we are going to make a ne negative pressure uh, icu in the pulmonary department and the government has sanctioned which we are going to construct very soon next slide 
and as you know the laundry area which is very important because the patient all the cleaning things goes there so laundry area so at least one said the patient once it discharge so what should you do either 70% ethyl alcohol for the small areas and the sodium hypochlorite 0.5% for the uh, for the surface disinfection and the staff who is dealing with the bedding towels and cloth he should wear the ppe inside addition to that he should wear a heavy duty gloves and boots or close shoes should be there and never carry a soil linen against your back and place the soil linen whatever is required after doing everything he should do a hand hygiene next slide and soil linen should be placed clearly labeled leak proof bags or containers and solid excrement putting in a covered bucket and putting in the toilet or latrine if you are using a washing machine wash 60 to 90 degree with laundry detergent in 0.1% chlorine or approximately 30 minutes and dry it if no machine we have just soaked in hot water you just stick to stir it and add this 0.1% chlorine approximately keep for 30 minutes rinse with water and hang it in the sunlight next slide so all the designated specific well trained staff for cleaning environment surface should be there and they should wear the ppe and they should see that the cleaning should be done every day and use a checklist to promote the accountability of the cleaning responsibility next slide and the spill management which i have told earlier if it is a 1% per 1% and 10% you can use it is more than then you can use for the 10% next next slide and don't spray no 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 sir just before that whenever a patient will be there and he will remove the room next before that don't spray or fog occupied or unoccupied rooms with disinfectant potentially this is a dangerous practice don't do this next slide as you know about the biomedical waste management next slide dedicated container for the hazardous medical waste immediately outside the operation room immediately dispose of all the contaminated disposable material and ppes container should be closed and sealed and while doing this the ppe should be worn and any visible during the contaminated container suppose any damage is there it should be replaced next slide and the medical waste should be a double bag label as a covid 19 along with the name of the department institute date and time and the category and all the packing bags should be sealed and again it will be sprayed with the chlorinated disinfectant with an additional bag and seal next slide all healthcare workers doing all this disposable medical waste how they should get the doffing personal protective equipment should be removed in the following order shoe cover gloves hand hygiene goggles face shield next hand hygiene gown next they will go for the hand hygiene the protective mask hygiene they will go for the hand cover next they go for the hand hygiene shower and change into the personal bathroom and non disposal should be protective equipment should be packed into the medical waste bag and placed in the designated area next slide so this is the labeling of the bmw bags which all of you know next slide generally for the covid patient we use the yellow and red yellow we put on all the dresses and everything and in the red we generally put our goggles all the plastics and also our gloves also we put it and white and blue we generally do not require next but ot as per the ot protocol whatever will be kept we can do it so cleaning and disinfecting environmental surface is a fundamental in reducing the healthcare associated infection so <coughs> established cleaning strategies should be used 
cleaning staff must be protected by use of standard precaution including the use of appropriate ppe and prevent environment contamination by containing respiratory secretion and manage the biological waste as per the existing biomedical waste management rule and after this covid 19 we have done our protocols and also we have also done biomedical waste also we have done it and uh, we are trying how far and checklist and we have assigned superintendent also assign our biomedical waste officers and under him also there is different ot the covid ot specifically he has been assigned where it will required he will do it thank you sir with the uh, permission of uh, balavaskar sir there is a um, short video is there uh, how it should be removed and if you allow me i can show it this how long is it how long is it it's about what uh it is about how in the ot the how we will cover it then how we remove it how the uh, entry the patient will go how we have to remove the patient uh, going to the ot is, okay okay man how long seven is minutes so this is a youtube one if you want i can show it seven minutes 11 minutes is a little seven, bit seven seven minutes sir seven, seven minutes, minutes. What we will do? Uh, because nine th it is nine thirty two now. I'm, I'm so that's why I asked your permission. If you allow me, I will go. Otherwise, we can go for this. What we will do? We will take questions now, madam. Huh. And if you have time permits, and uh, Dr. Mulidhar Joshi and Dr. Navin also are part of the end session, we will see. And if uh, it's not possible, we will upload your uh, video with your permission. Okay, sir. As part so of the. Actually, I I could understand it has become such a delayed. and uh, and we will uh, we'll just we will just uh, most likely we will take it up madam okay so sir we'll, we'll i will please with, sir uh, we'll, sir we'll, that's why i ask your permission sir yeah, yeah. Okay. thanks a lot uh, and sir, thanks for your presentation bala sir i have a suggestion we can play that video at the end so that it will be recorded and it will be permanently available in the youtube anytime okay okay that's what we will do at the end okay Th thanks a lot thanks a lot now Uh, yes the, the, this was the most important part of today's discussion actually because um, the safety first uh, of ourselves is more important uh, especially in covid whereas in other conditions we talk about safety of the patient preventing infection to the patient that's a, that's the way we approach the, uh, the scenario but the covid is very peculiar where we talk more about ourselves and probably less about the patient Okay, so sir, sir actually this uh, disinfectant plant we all doctors don't do. Actually, the either third or third grade or fourth grade of uh, persons they do. So we have to really properly we have to see it. Otherwise, there yeah. will be chances of problems. Yeah, we have to instruct them. We have to instruct them and supervise everything. And of course, within the OT, we are equally responsible. What we I want to highlight is before the importance of PPE came, almost thirty percent of the healthcare workers in Wuhan in China were infected. before they started strict implementation of the personal protective equipment so post pp only after undergoing all the trauma <laughs> of infection in the healthcare personnel this was uh, brought about and it helped in reducing the infection to the healthcare personnel that's what i am trying to tell we are trying to talk about protection for us number one and of course protection to other people outside the ot and to the patients also in fact it is so important nowadays even the smoke that comes out from the the cautery machine is yeah, supposed that's what i told sir i told you told so that's a very nice simple point here we think it's a hot thing and there won't be anything related to infection but it can also carry bacteria and the viruses including the coronavirus so that's so difficult is the situation but one commonest questions that is discussed everywhere is one about the ppe quality and the second one is about the n95 Uh, so sir i'll tell you one thing about the yeah. ppe quality uh, sir we are trying to see whatever the best can be done for our state sir uh, because we are i am in the technical committee is the chairman so for the <coughs> ppe we have three committee person we have sat down and we have personally checked and there should not be any uh, any damage we used to, that's what we have talked with the company people and accordingly he has instructed and whatever the our uh, being used there is satisfaction result is there and about n95 mask sir actually as per the icmr protocol it says you it should not be used but recently aims has given a circulation that you carry five mask so first day take n5 mask. so what you do first mask you use rest four mask then what will happen you will use it and keep it in one uh, paper uh, paper cover and keep it then second mask you use then you keep it third mask you use then you keep it 
fourth mask you use then you keep it fifth mask you use then you keep it again you rotate and keep so by the time you will be 20 times you can be used this is the aims latest guideline they have given but it has not approved by the icmr and some like uh, as for the some studies they said that we can use also like uh, uh, steam sterilization 134 degree heat 70% 30 minutes uv germicidal hydrogen peroxide vaporization 50 cycles and gamma radiation but sir as for the still now icmr has not recommended to use okay. but but with but with aims protocol license they have given this five things method and i think it must have circulated to all over the country and it has come to our department also sir so you are talking more about the economic aspects but what i was suggesting was about the quality of the pp and n95 yeah. so just to convey to our uh, participants here our um, um, all the colleagues in, and the members in fact isa also has taken the initiative in fact if you go through the the emails yes, sent uh, in the last few weeks we are talking about ppe because our people are more concerned about personal protection and unfortunately the standards have not been followed that is first part but if you go through the icmr recommendations the guidelines with respect to the type of material the thickness the reason it has to be water resistant and all the details have been given but for us as anesthesiologists it it is to highlight because we wear ppe and those with who are there in the high density area where where other positive patients are housed the ppe quality would differ basically number one is because we are at the head end of the patient and we are more likely to be exposed to the aerosols we have to be more careful so apart from the water resistant recommended material that is used for the overall so we are talking about the goggle so goggle has to perfectly seal uh, the eyes all around number one and number two is with respect to the use of the shield so it is always better to be uh, to err on wearing n95 plus shield also that is better because the n95 would not probably suit all the faces with different contours so in fact if you go through the nhs uh, guideline just about uh, one week ago it also talks about the beard so somebody having a beard it may not be adequate fit and as as far as, far as possible they say you try to trim your beard so that is one advice so what is more important is the face piece the the mask n95 mask which we use should be tight fitting and there should not be any leak and in fact we can also have a blow test so that yes sir we should have, have a blow test yes so that is it so that is one so as anesthesiologists working with a really suspect case or a positive case we should see that we definitely use n95 plus definitely a goggle over and above our so is somebody you think sir let me fix so can you mute your can you can you meet dr my uh, why my client was suffering all these days so that is more important and secondly with respect to the shield that's an additional protection for us even if there is a goggle so now lot of uh, you must be seeing our uh, anesthesiologists they are doing very much type of seals they are yeah, doing right. the handmade also very much to be engaged so I, i want to convey to our participants here so make sure that you are better protected than go by what is recommended by the government of india because i am also part of a government setup and advising the local deputy commissioner said also i was there so he was asking me what is the real ppe sir you give already i have got 2000 or something like that so many were sent back repeatedly in the last uh, 10 days to 15 days and luckily the best quality has come now for example leggings have to come up to the mid part of the leg the leg sheet or the leg cover should come should should not be restricted to the ankle that should cover up to the middle part of the leg that is important and we should always talk about using two gloves or more gloves two sir minimum two, two minimum sir minimum so that in the in the first session also i told we should not be confused about having one glove or two glove or three gloves both during donning and doffing you can use as many gloves as possible see, to see that there is no risk of infection that's about the gloves also and with respect to the quality and it was shared by our national body also they must be certified by two associations or the recognition bodies one located in coimbatore and one located in gwalior so if somebody is asking for a quality control we can insist that this quality control approval must be obtained from these institutions which are recognized by department of textiles of government of india so this is about the ppe part with respect to n95 again there is a confusion so for example what i would like to say say is this n95 is a based upon the 
American standards, NIOSH. So we have got what is known as National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, which discusses about the quality of the mask in USA. Whereas we have got European standards, which talks about the filtering face, face piece masks, basically. So we call it as basically FFPs. So FFP2, which is a European standard, represents 94% filtration that is technically equivalent to N95 by NIOSH of USA. So this is what I wanted to convey. There are two standards agencies on which we are depending upon now. One is your N95 from USA, or if somebody has written FFP2, it represents yeah. European standards. European. So please choose only those masks. And there is discussion about N99. Never go for N99 because 99 percent filtration it as we said you cannot breathe at all yeah. so n95 is enough for us and that's what we should and be we choosing should, uh, we should do a blow test before using blow that also. and at least uh, uh, there are multiple brands but please go through the internet and try to see whether they uh, they, they, are, they are approved by these agencies basically we have got 3m and there is a brand by name venus so which is also a neosh approved n95 so it is for our colleagues please see go through the internet N95 is equal to FFP2 of European standards. So this is all I wanted to convey about uh, the PPE and the N95. And with respect to some, one of our colleagues had asked about the use of glutaraldehyde, Cydex. Yes, you can use that. There is no problem. You can use also, sir. Glutaraldehyde is the highest, highest mode. So you can use that. Yeah. So but sir, really... ideally, sir, ideally they say it is better either you can go for a hydrogen peroxide or sodium one percent sodium <coughs> hypochlorite or most easiest method is that you can use seventy to ninety percent alcohol is the best. Alcohol, way. so wipe that can be done. So just to inform our colleagues, what we have been doing is in last one week is using condoms on the handle of the laryngoscope and the blade of the laryngoscope. The condoms and and it doesn't affect the vision. The light projection at the end, or the tip of the laryngoscope blade is not affected because it is thin and transparent. So what we do is dispose of the, for example, the one condom which is around the handle, the second condom which is around the blade. So that is straight away disposed of. And number two is, of course, beyond that, we can wipe it off with an alcohol swab or you can wash with a hypochlorite solution, as you said. So this is actually simple. The only problem with hypochlorite is sometimes metallic stains may be there. Yeah. But, <coughs> but after after that, if you can wipe with alcohol, there is no problem, sir. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, Dr. Uh, Balmaster, can I intervene one minute? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Please go ahead, sir. This uh, laryngoscope uh, cleaning has got a standard. Alcohol is not accepted. You have to use Parasave. I think it's uh, Parasave is hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. The other thing I want to tell you is that uh, about that you asked me about HEPA virus and uh, HEPA filter and virus. Yes, yes. Now HEPA virus, HEPA filter is actually useful. The reason is, although the virus uh, size is actually smaller than can easily go through the HEPA filter, the virus actually travels as droplets. So these droplets actually get uh, filtered out by the HEPA filter. So HEPA filter is equally uh, is good or efficient in removing the virus fungus. basically so that's very useful basically for that and again one of our colleagues has said this is a frequent question doing rounds in the social media which is the best ppe kit company name so it is uh, not easy to discuss basically so it is for you to get the kit from them and test basically so because whatever i get for example i put drop over it and see for <laughs> any metals that comes out on the under surface these things you have to perform check the goggles quality of the goggles they just send the Goggles, which are part of the HIV kit, which were there all these years. So it doesn't cover the whole part of the eyes around the eyes also. So we are not sure about the protection against aerosols. So that's a problem with uh, the PP kits. But of course, if uh, I don't know, uh, that is Dr. Raja who has asked it. So we can get in touch with us in private. We can suggest the names of the manufacturers and uh, you can get in touch with them and procure the PPE there. And in fact, ISA has given the responsibility to various branches in the last two days to have their own in-charge uh, persons, uh, members who can arrange for procurement of the PP for their members. So that can work in your branch. And if you don't get the answer, you can get in touch with us. We'll give you the details of persons who are nearest to your location. So that can be done. That's not a problem at all. So now uh, I think Madam's presentation was excellent. Um, 
because majority of the questions have already been covered because they have talked about what is n95 they have talked about uh, the uh, what is chemical spraying in the community is it effective uh, sir it actually effective? i have to say one thing that, that they are telling whether you are can you do a disinfection chamber that yeah. procedures are telling but uh, that is still yeah. doubtful it was not icmr approved but people are saying and they are trying this like 700 liters of the uh, same uh, they are the hydrogen peroxide mist they are putting and 650 person at a time can be disinfection chamber and it takes 40 second but sir this is uh, not yet uh, proved it is just being they are using it sir Yeah. Now, it is, you know, now it is disapproved. In at least I can watch for that. In South Indian states, they have stopped doing it. Uh, it has not no effect. Number one, and uh, it, uh, the other one, other yeah. one, yeah. community spraying. Yeah. Yeah, community spraying. That is, there is some places uh, seen helicopter. this is just the spread droning sir in our state we have started doing from the uh, drones all over this thing in mind that just the weird thing that uh, is it waste of resources or is some scientific because just so, this is see uh, this community spraying no i don't think it is effective the virus is inside your lungs you have to spray the surface <laughs> what what the relevant there is is and the second thing is hypochlorite solution is toxic to your skin skin and eyes it can cause skin lesions so uh, south indian states have stopped it actually uh, in trishur had it uh, some you know trishur had two centers uh, doing that they have stopped it now government has given order uh, yes as for the guidelines it is not recommended sir because they were yes, spraying sir, it for only 5 to 10 seconds that is not sufficient sufficient enough to produce disinfection and that too over the bo uh, body and also it is so spreading cool. over the skin so, so that's cool. not and there is no scientific basis for this so this that's why we have discarded all these things now dr balavaskar sir i'll like to make some points yeah please see there was some points uh, going about you very nicely talked about uh, ppe and n95 and uh, yes i'll like to reiterate <laughs> that uh, on 11th march uh, we had given our isa position statement to <laughs> Uh, making it uh, that all the members are advised to wear n95 mask and face shields while conducting anesthesia please reinforce all those your authorities whether you are working in, in government setup like me and dr bala baskar uh, or those who are working in uh, uh, corporate or freelance that these things have to be arranged and they have to be used and they are known as ppe personal protection there is nothing above personal protection please protect yourself if you are protected then only you will be able to serve the patients and the nation and take care of your family members sir can number i one. can i tell number one, one thing number one let me let, let me complete one. let me complete then uh, i had we had a discussion uh, with uh, yesterday there was a uh, uh, there was a meeting of uh, uh, called by ima and all the specialties were present including the surgical specialties the orthopedics the general surgeons gastroenterologists and all those things wherein we made it very clear that now there should not be any controversy about providing adequate pps in your hospital for conducting anesthesia please do not put your can can, can somebody unmute himself can the admin un Uh, I hope there is no further disturbances and flow of thoughts. So we had discussed amongst ourselves that uh, we are not going to compromise on the safety, and it was rightly uh, told to all the uh, surgical associations that anesthesiologists and also the ENT specialists. are maximally exposed uh, to the viral load of uh, because they are conducting agps uh, aerosol generating procedures maximally intubation and extubation so i hope there won't be any further uh, controversies in that and we also discussed whether there is any uh, time has now come where the corona testing we are part of psc as uh, was rightly said uh, in the beginning by dr bala baskar 
that uh, we may have to uh, yes i also feel now that we have to start learning to live with uh, covid 19 and uh, reform our strategies uh, as and when they uh, occur so uh, because after few days lockdown will open elective surgeries will restart semi emergency and emergencies are going on so we have to protect ourselves please do not buy ppes worth 250 rupees or 300 rupees please buy the standards approved by the uh, government of india the sitara in coimbatore and the gwalior one yes the better one are uh, you have to uh, sweat a lot in that but they are protective face shields are always always an add on so please wear n95 and face shields and uh, arrange for the funds locally there was talk going on uh, about the hydrogen peroxide yes we need to have uh, vhpgs we price hydrogen peroxide generators we have to ask for our administrators because they cost somewhere around 30 to 40 lakh rupees so uh, send your demands when the government is buying so many ventilators you can go for vhpgs also simple thing laryngoscope yes tricks and tricks are there and uh, if nothing we have to dip it in hypochlorite 0.5% for half an hour and then wipe it clean with the alcohol Uh, you can use uh, outer side uh, the outer glove or the condom as dr bala was cover saying and uh, uh, practically disposable laryngoscopes uh, blades are not available everywhere so please 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 as in uh, from isa national point of view it is reiterated please wear n95 masks please wear face shields it has been uh, do not argue with your uh, surgeons they have to follow it they have to follow it and sure and uh, delivery is an issue right now funds are not an an issue delivery is an issue and we are working with ima and local uh, coordinators the procurement coordinators uh, they will help in uh, arranging for the pps as far as these guidelines are there as, as i said in earlier we don't have to be very very rigid we have to be flexible it will be uh, updated as and when required for that only we have found our clinical uh, isa national task force comprising of clinical coordinators and training coordinators uh, yes right now we are not facing too much load of training uh, uh, ventilatory load on the patients hopefully we may not need uh, in future also but we have to prepared for that also and there i'll request the teachers please depute some of your faculty members for training not only the uh, refresher course for your own department but for the anesthesiologist working in uh, field and even uh, Uh, other colleagues also if they so desire thank you very much thanks a lot to dr navin malhotra yeah. so just to add to the the what to dr navin expressed and or whatever i is doing one more thing is what has been observed is i want um, everybody to understand please when we saying to stay home uh, stay safe we have found that almost 50% of footwear of the people who are handling covid 19 patients i repeat 50% of the people who are wearing the water the footwear and done they have carried the virus to the home the footwear carry covid 19 to home please make sure at least till the epidemic or pandemic comes to some particular control don't use regular shoes and all use something poly can always discard it and throw it off make sure you don't carry virus to your home or trouble your family dr baskar please go ahead okay thank you thanks a lot now we have um, uh, some important questions i think i i, I hope uh, uh, president and secretary we can carry on for another 10 minutes please 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 okay. uh, doctor for another 10 minutes okay waiting. so what we have is we have some important questions here more practical also so i would like our senior members and the faculty to um, to to contribute here so for example there is a question from dr sendil trichy sir i understand the discussion is for covid positive patients positive but as of now many centers are doing emergency cases where we are not able to do covid test in that the situation is it okay if we only have indirect markers of covid like chest x ray then serum ferritin d dimer and crp so they are used as markers nowadays so to, to make it brief so for example if you have suspected patient or we suspect strongly but covid test has not been done because the protocol conducting a covid test on that patient because government of india protocol doesn't allow the same thing happened in my institution yesterday also um uh, there was some uh, our pgs came and complained uh, sir we went inside 
then uh, the surgical pgs and one staff uh, they came with ppe on but they never informed because patient was from one of the the, the isolated areas where there are more of uh, pp i mean positive patients okay so that is a condition so what should we do in such situation how can we screen the patients coming for emergency surgery in fact i saw a, 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 a circular um, signed by dr jayshree sudh in delhi she has written there that the previous day all the patients coming for the ot must be subjected to covid test so that is from one institution but government of india doesn't allow so i think we should respond or take some stand on this so this open to our uh, of course our office bearers plus our senior colleagues here see dr kerala sir what we are planning is next week uh, in kerala i think they will be opening up all the private hospitals for regular work Okay. We don't know who are the silent carriers. Yeah. The best way you can move forward is consider every patient as a potential risk. Yeah. You, you, like Madam said, you, the basic thing, eighty percent of the protection occurs if you wear a face shield, an N95 mask, and cover your upper part of the body. Okay. So every patient should be considered like that. You are safe because, like Doctor Sendil mentioned, Doctor Sendil mentioned, you're doing a Uh, a lot of uh, studies to identify covid patients all that is not going to happen it involves a lot of money that is not a practical thing to do so consider every patient as a potential risk patient and treat it as a treat them as a covid patient universal precaution we have to take that is true precaution as you see as you see if it is a government setup and there are protocols they say the our protocol doesn't uh, allow for Giving the PPE, our protocol doesn't say we we can give N95 to the the, the to anesthesia group or whatever the OT personnel. So Dr. Green is ready. Sir, <laughs> see, I can understand because we both are working in the government se sector and uh, catering to everybody in the in India. See, the thing is, uh, we you need to have some sort of uh, COVID screening also for all the patients, and if there is a strong suspicion by the team which is screening it uh, like our uh, second year post graduate is that questionnaire is there and if the covid score is more than 6 we ask them to go for the uh, swab test but at times that is also there is some reluctancy in doing that but then we push forward to it that you have to do it but that is for elective <laughs> surgery suppose some patients comes uh, with emergency surgery and we strongly uh, believe that he he or she is covid positive uh, we have kept five kits um, 11 into 5 five sets of surgical 11 kits per surgery we have reserved and five kits are there in the covid ot at one given time of uh, place of time today only we have written a letter from our department to the vice chancellor that please ensure that five n95 masks and uh, one face shield is given oh. all anesthesiologists uh, of the department arrange it two things sir third thing is very rightly said surgeries will open up and we have to treat everybody as covid positive three things we can always do n95 and face shield on our on us and surgical face mask on the patient for as maximum duration as possible major surgeries uh, cabgs uh, transplants laparotomies whipples their surgeons uh, i had an informal discussions with them uh, thrs tkrs they are going to make it as uh, mandatory as hbs hiv and hcv right so this will become a part uh, of the costly surgery packages the problem will come for smaller surgeries like hernia or hydrocele or laparoscopic cholecystectomy or cesarean sections where we will have to go uh, with our strong suspicion and if there is a suspicion and not an emergency we will have to go for testing but yes we should get prepared that we are going to go into <laughs> in an era where corona testing may become a part of pre anesthetic assessment investigation sir do you use reuse your n95 mask sir uh, as of now in our institute uh, elective surgeries are not being done so the duties are coming for the residents uh, after every 3 to 4 days so what we have done is we have given them four masks and uh, they uh, re reuse it for sure for sure but 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 suppose the resident who is on duty and goes for resuscitation like a young male with head injury comes and he has to intubate it then during that intubation he uses everything and discards after intubation because he has not screened that patient in the triage when he goes 
for research station. One anesthesiologist is posted in emergency department in the triage. For triage, we have kept five kids per day because that's an average one. So where they go and uh, they take all precautions and discard it there. For routine, yes, I agree with you. We are using even myself. And I can tell you, uh, no harm in showing to the national media. These are the two ones which are there with me. One with filter, one without filter. We are having Venus 95 and with filter is always, always comfortable. Thanks a lot for the feedback, Dr. Naveen. And uh, of course, uh, our, our uh, the, the member also asked, sir, we, we suspect, are we at liberty to ask for all those tests, which are indirect markers? We are not doing the direct COVID test. If I ask for D-dimer, if I ask for uh, the peritin and other things, it will cost at least 2,500 rupees. Not practical also, sir. Not practical. That's true. So, so, Dr. Balvaskar, I want, just want to highlight one point. Yeah. The naso, nasal swab that you take, no? which we believe that it is the Bible truth, yeah. the sensitivity is only 30 to 50 percent. That's you have seen I, people I, are I, going to miss. I, I agree with you, sir, because I talked to the, my microbiologist friend, say that, say that the technique with, it, with which it is, it is taken, it's more and uh, that is also important. So, yes. we, so it has to be done pro uh, 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 properly also. Yeah, that is super. And the VTM media, the viral transport media should be proper quality and then it should be analyzed also uh, uh, by the uh, good, good uh, testing machines. Okay. So, any other feedback to Dr. Murli? Uh, you got any points to convey here? Sometime, I think, Polly. Uh, I think, Polly, whatever things uh, have been like in Polly, these are follow up webinars happening across the country with uh, different city branches, state branches, almost every day, Polly. We're sitting through so many webinars and all, definitely it's enlightening on knowledge. But definitely, whatever the ISA is trying to do with advisory or interacting with the uh, stakeholders, either in government or the private sector, or with respect to uh, distributing the funds for the sake of the personal protection and all, these are all way forward and all those things. But again, at, as well, what we said last week, we might collect this week and this week, what a discussion we had. If new findings come next week, we might have to change our opinion suggestion. But biggest challenge is. Because from Monday onwards, if we are going to the electric cases across the country, at least wherever the green zones are there, there will be new challenge about that one, whom to consider yeah. positive and all. I think we should go with innocent precaution. Everybody take them as high risk group or positive, take all the precaution that's necessary. Make sure you don't carry the virus back home. That's most important. Probably carry minimal things. Probably maybe you probably can just carry your key, car key, or maybe you can avoid the purse and many of these things and all. Maybe a mobile phone and whatever. Bare minimum, please try to avoid carrying laptop and all those things. You never know where you're going, how you're going. Make sure that you stay safe. You're in the hospital also from Monday onward. Take care of it. Probably government may not take up the electives at this stage, but the privates might start taking up because many of the government hospitals are COVID centers now. They may not take up at this stage. Okay, so thanks a lot. Sir, sir. Yes? Agreed, but the problem with the freelancer anesthetist. Sir, Monday onwards, uh, everything is I'm open, sir. That, that's going to be really difficult. You go to the case, come back. You go to the case, come back. How many times you can uh, wash uh, this thing? Take sir, you have to, sir, that you that have, you have to save yourself. You have, yourself, have, to, save yourself, you have to save yourself. There's no other option. What you do it for HIV, HIV, same thing. You have to do it. There's no chance. No, no, no. no. Coming, changing your shoes, changing the dress, again taking no, the Question here. Dr. Giri, uh, we will have, President Sir is very, very right. I endorse his views. We have to change ourselves now. Yeah. See, uh, in last four weeks has been uh, seeing a sea change in our lives. So now we will have to change our practice also. That is why we wrote in our advisory also, please wear uh, uh, cap, mask. I know at times we don't uh, wear gloves and do the things, but now we will have to change our practice. Not for anybody else, but for our own self and our family. I think mask will be the new order now. Mask new order in the society, I think. Looks like that. Must men. Yeah, what? yeah. It will be a new order for across the country now. That's going to be the, the thing. This, this, this ma ma mask is really a problem because these people don't know how to use. Sir, so nobody knows. To make this is across the globe, sir. It's, this is across the globe. You may not believe, allowed. like I was getting information today from UK, almost 30% of the NHS people, let me be 30 NHS people are showing symptoms or the kind of showing kind of positive features of the COVID-19. 30% NHS, I'm just giving an idea. This is a worldwide problem. We don't know who is going to hit very badly and all. You can just hope for taking precautions to save yourself. Okay. So, 
So, for example, there are questions. Yeah, Mahasri will have tried in and out because the people yeah, yeah, are still right. going back and forth. That, 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 that is, that is. So there is a question and it is already covered. So somebody has asked, regeneration is also under PPE. Yes, if, if you are dealing with a positive patient and if you are a suspected patient, strongly you suspect, definitely okay. PPE is mandatory. Everything for monitored anesthesia care or for a region anesthesia or general anesthesia, PPE is mandatory. And uh, we did touch upon pre anesthetic evaluation of the patients. Say rightly, there is a question about the pre anesthetic checkup. What precautions outside the theater should we take? Thank you, sir. Sir, it's a nice question. Uh, can I take Dr. it? Shamshad, madam, is there? Uh, yes, she can. Dr. Shamshad? Uh, the recommendations are we, got, we have to use for pre anesthetic evaluation, we have to use the N95 mask as well as the gloves. Okay. Yeah. So that's that the epidemiological. Uh, we have to concentrate more on the epidemiological uh, status of the patient. But more, one thing, what we are seeing is that most of the patients, we have to counter check whether they are giving the, the correct answers or not. The epidemiological history, we have to evaluate very, very strictly and we have to go on continuously asking for that. And the personal protection that we have to advise is use the N95 mask as well as the gloves. That is the recommendation. Yeah. We are so, using it. Yeah, ideally you should be using, provided there is a supply and you use it judiciously. That yeah, yeah, Dr. Baskar, are really logistical. Yeah, Dr. Baskar. Yeah. The most important social distancing. It patient may not be the carrier. It might be the attendant who might be the carrier. Right. And the files and all. And the third thing is they may not always present with the, probably the respiratory like in, like in symptoms. It yeah. could be J symptoms also. That's what being surfaced and all. So best thing is suspect everyone. Suspect everyone. That's the best thing. Yeah. And especially especially hand railings of the trolley and all the chairs and all. That's what they're saying. It's uh, don't allow not don't allow more than ten patients to be in the waiting area. Yeah. Give a time and all this appointment. Don't try to crowd the entire outpatient area. Everyone becomes contaminated. That's what is being said. Not more than ten patients, depending on the area what you have. And yeah. The social distancing has to happen. Yeah. And we can add uh, in pre-medication for sure, for, especially for cesarean sections, uh, anti-emetics and uh, intraoperatively uh, supplemented with ondansetron and dexamethasone. I was discussing uh, with my junior in New York because they are uh, regularly doing this uh, COVID positive patients day in and day out. So they have increased the uh, ensured uh, that every patient receives metaclonamide, every patient's intraoperative receives ondansetron and dexamethasone, so that there is no incidence of uh, less incidence of PONV. And because not vomiting per se, but vomiting is associated with coughing. So uh, ensure ensure that there is no bucking and ensure ensure that there is. No coughing. Okay, sir. There is a, uh, we we have a question related to again ventilation. Uh, with respect, somebody has asked about. It. Uh, of course, you can just give the reply here. Uh, use of venturi mask, uh, whether it is allowed, whether mask at all, mask no. at all, we are using. Dr. Suresh Nair, whether yeah. mask ventilation in the pre in before induction before intubation is it required number one and secondly whether venturi can be used for induction as i said before mask ventilation is generally not uh, not advocated because we have to pre-oxygenate the patient for three to five minutes we are using drugs which acts very quickly so if you use succinyl cooling 60 seconds they will easily tolerate yeah. low chronic probably 60 to 90 seconds yeah. venturi again is not a good idea because it again generates a lot of aerosol yeah, and uh, okay. all these this can generate a lot of uh, aerosol in the atmosphere, which can be a source of infection. Agreed, agreed, sir. Any, any, there is a common question. It's also part of. Uh, I saw a publication just two days ago. Recommendations from the surgical societies across the world, including American society. Laparoscopic procedures is laparoscopic procedure indicated in in COVID patients is one question, and there is another question. Anything special to be done for prone procedures like PCNL? PCNL for uh, renal uh, stones. So laparoscopy by and large is, is not advised by and large as of now. Yeah. Laparoscopy, they prefer choice because of the, again, the problem is how the, it can spread and all those things, aerosol order, nobody knows. So by and large, if you don't know the devil, best thing is to take precaution. They prefer thing is to go for the uh, open kind of surgery. Yeah. And uh, prone position personnel, well, I don't have an idea that we can change our practice on the quality of the 
Same thing. I don't have an expert about the prone position for the COVID patients. Sir. Yes. Now, with respect to prone position for PCNL, I don't think there is any concern. Basically, yeah. you can just manage so it. Definitely, as laparoscopy in... definitely the preferred choice yeah. to avoid. Yeah, laparoscopy, real risk is there. The raised intraoperative pressure, there is always a risk of the aerosols coming into the atmosphere. So, that's always there. So, that uh, prone position in PCNL, the main problem Better. is lesions from the mouth. And yes. part of... Uh, uh, Contact, formite form, formation. Formite contact, yes. <clears throat> so there is always. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Navi. Uh, uh, just wanted to say that uh, since we are, uh, uh, we have to be flexible in our approach. Yeah. So, a word about succinyl choline. Yeah. Uh, I can say in our department, we had stopped using succinyl alcoholine and maybe many other departments also, but COVID has taught us to be again flexible. Okay. The drug which was which was out of, which was not uh, seen as a taboo and uh, was just outside the shelf is now at number one in the shelf. <laughs> now my fear here is a lot of other things will start coming up, which was happening periphery. They'll come back with great difficulty. We took them out. I think many of us, we know, which are could not recommend like many places, the PCN done under, under regional anesthesia. I think many of you might have heard about that one. Those things might come into practice and this kind of thing just to avoid the general anesthesia kind of thing, which we should be careful, which, which we should not be encouraging. Yeah, the standard that you follow. Yes, yes, Joshi. Okay, so I think uh, rest of the questions have already been uh, discussed because I went through the questions which is uh, added to our chat and also to the YouTube. Um, for example, uh, of course, glycopyrrolate. Just now we talked about the PCN and the prone position. We don't want secretions to actively come out. So in the absence of contraindications, I think we can very well use glycopyrrolate to dry out the secretions that we can do. And there is some ICU questions. People have asked about use of derifiline and steroids in the COVID ICU patient. Uh, Dr. Suresh, you'll take that question. Yeah, I'll take a steroid first because uh, as the surviving sepsis campaign has given a new guideline on management of... Uh, uh, COVID patients with uh, uh, what you call ARDS like picture. Now, yeah. one of the things they say there's spe the specific indications for the use of steroids. Yeah. One is you have a COVID patient in septic shock who's not responding to your usual uh, inotropes and uh, fluid loading. You can give low dose steroids, 200 milligrams per day. The other situation where you can use steroids is severe ARDS or grade three, that is PAO to FIO to ratio less than 200 or 100. Low dose methylprednisone can be used as as a as a this thing again. This is not basically to treat anything. It is just to prevent the fibrotic changes occurring in these patients subsequently. So generally, steroids are advocated towards the end of the first week if it is required. These are the only two indications of the use of of steroids. Although there are some people who say that early steroids are uh, advocated. Surviving sepsis campaign so far has told these are the only two indications for sta starting steroids. The other one is derifilin. Derifilin, I don't know whether it makes any difference. It causes tachycardia. Most of these patients are already having tachycardia, so it can actually, especially if you give intravenous derifilin, it can cause severe tachyarrhythmias. That's the possibility. Otherwise, I don't think there's any contraindication. Yeah, it's one other thing, we'll, we might have changed the practice in nebularization for the bronchodilate, which you might be doing for a lot of uh, airway disorders. And all. That is going to be a bit tough time, whether in ICU or maybe in the war. Settings because you know you know what exactly I'm trying to say. Exactly, that's a very important point that you brought. Yeah. Sir, actually, as per the WHO guideline, they say unless and until it is needed, you go don't go for the nebulization. Yes, that is true. So as much as you 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 decide based on the case and uh, the need. So it's there are basically guidelines. I always still say that there is some role for NIV, there is some role of HFNC or even aerosols, only for select cases. So that, that benefit of deciding would go to you only as a caretaker. If it's really life-saving and you are sure that there is self-protection and protection of the community around you, you can decide on a case-to-case -case basis. Yes. And, uh, of course, uh, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Venkatagiri, Dr. Venkatagiri is there, our chief coordinator for today's program. Yeah, uh, okay, so I think uh, there was one uh, nice uh, uh, statement made by one of our colleagues here. Basically, he says that, uh, yes, it is uh, all of us, we are going to live with COVID now. And living with COVID is always feasible with all precautions. So yes. doing surgeries and maintaining ICU now and in future is feasible, but uh, with precautions. That uh, sums up the, 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 the end of uh, today's discussion, basically.
Uh, what you're is right, sir. You're right. It's 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 something like, like swine flu or probably the bird flu. It is going to be with us. With us only. It's going to. Let's plan till like this. Now it is not end with May June. It's going yeah. to till December Jan. Like you know, part of for the part of the family. Yeah. Then ask for the epidemiological uh, epidemiologist calculation. It will go up to September fifteenth. No, come, 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 come next time also. First, it will come to Bhuvaneshwar next year. <laughs> Not to Canada. <laughs> There is one question from Dr. Rajiv Gupta, Dr. Bala Baskar. Yes. On your uh, uh, WhatsApp, he is asked. Uh, In WhatsApp. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, read it for your comfort. I have been ordered. Can PPE be uh, sterilized? Can PPE be yes, sterilized? Yes. and uh, whether it should be water resistant or water impermeable and uh, if stitch line should be also uh, he re emphasizes that stitch line should be uh, sealed so that there is no leak inside and uh, some pps have got laminated pvcs so which make it uh, uh, slightly uh, not breathable so what uh, the standards say is that yes the pps have to be now breathable the which we even which were coming uh, two weeks earlier around uh, 25th march or so they were very uh, difficult and uh, lots of perspiration and sweat was there thirst was there and uh, as of now reusable some literature is coming but uh, we are not reusing it yeah it's not advice and number two i can add on here for example uh, it was worn uh, what is supplied now is a single universal size of the ppe so what i have yeah what i have asked my my, my administrators here is see the, the suppliers are telling sir no it's coming in only one size but now i am telling we should insist that at least it comes in two sizes now because we have, we have got our own colleagues and pgs who are really you know physically they are short and the ones which are supplied are very huge ones huge ones are okay to the extent but small ones for a big structure is not adequate because it tore when i was displaying for one of our groups locally about one week ago it was the, the the stitch gave up gave away in the pants there in the lower part <coughs> so that's the reason that's a potential area for the risk of exposure to the infection so yeah, one, one more one more concern i have is about the recirculating <coughs> these things because most of them may not be blood stained as you talk of mask or probably the the gowns and all may not be i should say even the n95 also if you just discard it like that it might come back into circulation we need to be careful about safe disposal of All these disposal products. Otherwise, you never know. Just get it packed, and it will come back to your care again. Your uh, probably whatever the store back again. You need to be careful. Yeah. So better. So disposal is very important. Yeah, we have to de destroy the basically destroy. Like, of course, avoiding the aerosol and all the. If you can cut it and all those things do something so that make sure that it doesn't come back in circulation. Yeah. Ideally, no question of reuse of either PP or N95. Even Sir, though it, once it goes out of your hospital. Yeah. That's the problem here. Once it goes out of your hospital, somebody picking it from elsewhere. Yeah. Sending it back to your hospital in a sterile pack. That's a risk. Yeah, that's a risk. That, that that's a new industry for us. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, yes. Uh, uh, there was one question. Can you give the steam inhalation for this cough and other things for these patients? Sir? No. no. Same same no. problem, sir. No. Same problem. No. Here as well. Best best thing is to avoid as much as possible. Okay, Doctor Kiran has asked about steam inhalation. Steam inhalation. No, no. Okay. Actually, the opposite in the sense we should have steam inhalation and we should have salt water gargling and iodine wash before we go. That is advised. <laughs> For us. For us. Yeah, yeah. So before go or after coming from there? No, early every day. Every day it's advised. There are papers about the use of iodine and for dental hygiene basically. Dental hygiene. It is supposed to reduce the viral load. Viral load basically and might help. That's all. I think uh, Dr. Balabaskar, it's 10:20, and uh, uh, participants are also decreasing. I think, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We can, we can yeah. have a concluding remark from you, yeah. and then subsequently by president, and then we close it. Or a vote of thanks from uh, Dr. Bell. He has to say something. Please, please. Yes. Uh, Dr. Van Kettering, please take yeah. over. Yeah, that's what. Uh, 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 it was really nice that uh, good participation, and uh, as expected, and. Uh, uh, a good discussion all have prepared very well our uh, friends colleagues uh, everybody has prepared very well in this and uh, thank you uh, everyone for this thing and uh, uh, binil wanted one more uh, navin navin actually wanted on ventilation and uh, ventilators so if good participants are there we can have one more if there are uh, people want that we can have in the but we are coming soon with the isa national webinar along with imma 
and that will cover three four topics which i'll share in uh, uh, hopefully in two to three days or so so once that's uh, it is recorded i'll uh, the speakers are finalized i'll let you know and they'll cover other topics also okay. uh, i think as dr uh, murulder shivoshi was saying our president now we have to start living with webinars also and online programs so uh, we will have a, a regular such program Yeah, it's a good that they had a good interaction and uh, this. Yes, de uh, definitely. But we can't keep everybody open because everybody will start talking. That's why we kept muted and kept only the uh, seven eight people. Others have put questions. Anyway, they have put questions. And Balabaskar did a very good job in uh, compiling, seeing that, and keeping ready and all uh, managing. And uh, thank you. Uh, I request now uh, President for his uh, concluding remarks, and then Binil for the word of thanks. Binil, Binil, word of thanks. Uh, any concluding, uh, president, sir. Any, yeah, any, yeah, thank you. yeah. Sure, sure. That, that it was, it was nice. I think I should uh, compliment the team uh, as a Kerala for a fantastic job. I think it was eye opener. It was worth spending time, uh, but whatever the evening and all, it was nice and it was good. And probably every webinar we keep attending, we learn something new and we take home and we share our thoughts. And um, we wish everybody uh, probably like uh, probably a safe and aesthetic work and all. Please, what are the funds have been released from the I say national for procure PPE. Please put to the proper use. Don't just plan for only for May, June, and all. Please plan for almost year until December. And wherever you feel you want to use your local fund, either from your own state, uh, event, conference, CME, whatever proceedings are there, number of people. So you be safe. You are safe. Everything will be safe. Safe for us, Trisha. It will be safe country. We want you to be safe because we lose you out of thirty for forty days. The big loss for us. Uh, uh, thanks to I S K L for putting up the magic show. Okay, good luck. You can do it. Thank you, sir. Good. For winding up, I thank the faculties, Dr. Shamshad Begum, Professor and H O D of Government Medical College, Kerala. Dr. Suresh Ji Nair, Lead Consultant, Arshir Med City, Kochi. Dr. Nipadida Pani, Professor, SCB Medical College, Kerala, Kochi, sir, for sharing their knowledge. I'm sure that the deliberations in the webinar will enrich professional knowledge of all of our participants. I also take this opportunity to appreciate and congratulate our ISA National President, Dr. Murli Dar Joshi, and Secretary, Dr. Navin Malhotra, for giving us the opportunity to host a webinar on COVID-19. Special thanks to ISA National Headquarters for releasing grants in aid for the purchase of our PPE and masks and face shields. I thank Dr. Balabaskar, our immediate national president, for coordinating for and um, uh, the show. I extend my sincere thanks to our president-elect, Dr. Mitagiri, organizing all the arrangements for this webinar. Thank our uh, state president, Dr. Mohammad Nasser, for the help of conducting this program. I think uh, I session on COVID-19. We look forward to meeting you all next week. Another interactive webinar session. Thank you and good night. Okay, thank you all. I think we'll conclude. Yeah, thank you all. I'll be winding up the meeting. Thank you all. Let me let it. Yeah. No, no, it is available. And please put that uh, little bit of uh, video. Please put it. Naveen, Praveen, video.
thank you sir i'm going to close the session thank you one and all good night okay, okay thank you